um, asked to uh, postpone to the next meeting, which will be November 14th. So I don't know if there are any folks here for that meeting. Yep. So we can't discuss it. And so you can stick around for a, a scintillating a, a meeting <laughs> if you'd like. Um, the next uh, item on the agenda is. So the next meeting will be uh, November, November 14th. 14th. Yeah. yeah. November 14th. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Did I say that? I just said that. So okay. You said the next meeting, but didn't specify what it was. Oh, I that's I said okay. November 14th. I'm sorry. No, that's all good. Thank you kindly. Um, so we have a request for determination of applicability 2017-10-288 to 292 Grove Street, Lot 37, Lot 4, Meadowbrook Golf Course. Well, what time? Sounds more Jack, so you just tell me which one. Uh, put up the, the GDU. That's it. Just zoom in on the entrance check if you can. Okay, hey, for the record, that's it, that's perfect. For the record, my name is Jack Sullivan, owner of the Sullivan Engineering Group, and it's been a little while since we've come back before you on, on this application. Um, we've been in front of CPDC. Uh, we went uh, last month in front of them, had a good meeting, and there were some changes made to the drainage system um, that, that, that I worked out with the town engineer. If, if you remember, there'll, there'll be the new clubhouse. We have the new site entrance. And previously, I had a trench drain down here, and there was some concern with water coming off the upper parking lot, and the commission had a similar concern. Uh, so what I did in revising the drainage is that I've added two leaching catch basins with two-foot sumps up gradient of the site entrance. They'll be interconnected by a 12 inch uh, perforated drain pipe. Um, at the site entrance, we're gonna have a deep sump catch basin and a trench drain. Um, the town engineer and I were going back and forth at first. They wanted a trench drain, then they wanted a catch basin. Now we're doing a combination. The concern was um, it's still a pretty good pitch coming down this entrance. They fear that water might hop that trench drain. Um, this is a low point where the deep sump catch basin is, so we're doing a combination of, of the two. Um, as you remember, for the clubhouse itself, we have an infiltration field picking up the entire roof area for the 100-year storm. So these drainage improvements, um, the water will come down, collect into these leaching catch basins. Can I ask you a question, Jack, yeah. on that the upper one? Do you have a trench drain on that upper one as well? I do not. But I just was curious as to why that wasn't put there because there's such a larger square footage of that upper parking lot coming down that gradient slope there that why a trench drain wasn't put there. Right. So there was a concern with CT CPDC with noise with the uh, trench drains when cars go at the club. Right, right, they right, didn't want right. to hear that. Yep. And so I, I showed a drainage area to the town engineer, the high point in the parking lots here. And this parking lot is super elevated. It mm -hmm. all drains this way. Yep. And we're putting curbing right here. So water will come down, collect here, and then water draining along this new walkway will collect here. So the town engineer was happy with it. We're picking it up. Um, so is that up a parking lot being torn out and regraded? No. No, it's not. So no. it's going to stay as is. Right. Okay. Right. So just so, so everyone knows, right now there's no drainage controls right. on this site. There's no TSS removal. There's no structures at all. So by putting, you know, we're really going... I meet stormwater policy with just the infiltration field, but there was concerns with water, especially winter months, sheeting onto Grove Street, maybe causing some sort of problem. Um, so with these, with this drainage in place now, um, the town engineers approved the design. Um, the rain garden can, the, the water coming off this site um, to this catch basin, we control the entire two and ten year storm event prior to any overtopping in the rain guarding out to the out to the wetland area. And I what I with the hundred year storm now, I've decreased the peak rate of runoff coming off this site by twenty percent and a volume of runoff by sixty percent. Um, another change we made is at the site entrance. Um, previously 
we, we had a, a tighter radius here coming to the existing pavement. CPDC and the town engineer had concerns with people parking in this area like they historically do now. They asked us to bump this out and create more green space and put in vertical granite curbing. This is the 100 foot buffer line right here. So we did add some green space within the 100 foot buffer. We're flaring, flaring this, this out, it becomes more of an island and so there'll be green space in that spot. Um, so those are the two major changes since we last came before you. We're going back to CPDC in November. In November. They're going to have their decision set at that time. I think they closed the hearing at the, at, at the last hearing, and they're going to have their decision made. So uh, we're set to have you guys rule on this now and hopefully issue a negative determination. I, I was going to say that uh, you know one thing came up. This commission didn't receive the plans, so I'm not sure if review is needed before we close. So just keep that in mind in the questions. Um, so two things, one just observational and really has very little to do with the conservation. But I mean, not many people come from the, this direction on Grove Street. Um, man, that's a tough turn there to, to get into the circle, right? It, was it like, this turn here? Yeah. It, it's very tough. And, and there was discussion on that with um, so not, not so much for vehicles, um, but for, for, for loading and unloading of larger vehicles making deliveries. Yeah. Um, so smaller trucks will be able to make the turn. We had to actually demonstrate over here, we've created a loading space. One, like once or twice a week, they have the large trailer trucks come in. We've created a loading space right here for that temporary loading and unloading space for the large trucks and then they'll continue up into the site, turn around, and come back out. It's wide enough for people to still get in. Yeah, and, and there's enough room to get by, so that was vetted as well. Um, so and and that, that was my, previously, if you remember, I had the entrance over here. We had a lot of pushback from the abutter. So we, you know, it was a better layout with the entrance over here, but that's passed. We've had discussions with attorneys and everything else, but we've come up with an alternative for, for this to work now. Um, and then more towards conservation. What's the invert? We, so we didn't have the uh, set of these plans before the meeting. What's the invert of the or what's the elevation of the overflow? I think I kind of remember yep. going through this last time. It's right here. It's at elevation eighty six seventy five. Eighty six seventy five. Okay. And what's the top of the catch basin and the trench drain? Eighty seven fifty. Eighty seven fifty. Okay. So we're like nine nine inches higher. So the town engineer had asked me to, the, the, the design point for this drain system's right here, that's the low point. And he wanted me to, to show that there wouldn't be any excess water coming off the site, for this, and, that, and that's what I demonstrated. So Jack, you've been through CPDC? Yes. <clears throat> and after us, do you have any others, other things to go through? No. When do you anticipate starting construction then? It's up to the club, but I, I would probably think next fall, because you know they they close down yeah, right about now, yeah. and so they're not going to want to demo and lose a season. I would think next year, so I would think next fall. Could you just take a minute and speak to the planting plan within the hundred foot? I see that the rain. We have a schematic for the rain garden planting plan. Yeah. But outside of that specific planting plan, what, what else is within the 100 feet? There is a landscape plan, but most of the, the plants are all, the, the, there's this landscape plan. Outside of the 100 foot. That's, I'm at, that's why I'm asking. Right. Inside of the 100 no, foot. We don't, we, we don't really have plantings inside the 100 foot. The, the rain garden will be planted, like you said, in this area out, out here where we created this island is going to be grassed. So the, the no, hundred foot buffer is right here. No, I know. Rica, so I, I know. This, <laughs> this, this, this limited area to, to plant, which we don't we don't have any plantings, but there's no trees to be cut within the hundred foot buffer. Outside of the hundred feet, we're, we are we're, we're doing an extensive landscape plan, and um, 
there's going to be some arborvitaes and stuff to provide some uh, a shielded buffer to, to the abutters. So at this point, um, existing conditions, what's the extent of brush and tree cover between the rain garden and the wetlands? Where's the limit of the... Here's the limit of work. There's one 20-inch tree here that will remain. This is all grassed. Where, where the rain garden is, is now grassed. In between the rain garden and the wetland? Between the rain garden and the wetland, at the limit of work line, that that's probably about the tree line. That's probably probably the drip line. It, it, that's not we're touched. not taking any trees. We're not taking any brush out. It's just it's a lawn area that we're going to convert to a rain garden. Okay. Any questions? Any questions from commission members? I just had a question. It's, <clears throat> it's not a conservation. It was along that uh, Grove radius. Street where that radius is for the entrance. Yeah. Is that going to be a no parking area now? Yeah, informally. That they're not going to post it, but okay. it's there's not going to be parking. We talked about an hour on that at CPDC. Yeah. So with these changes, how do you anticipate it's going to change the drainage on that part of Grove Street? Oh, a great improvement. Because all the runoff from the parking lot is not going to go rushing into the street. We, right. So not only are we reducing peak rates of runoff and volume, but also like. Right now, there's no treatment of runoff coming off at all. Now, with the deep sumps, the rain garden, outlet, you know, we'll have TSS removal, so there'll be an improvement that way. So, on, on my numbers, there'll be a 20% reduction for peak rates of runoff in the post development scenario and a 63% reduction in volume of water coming off. And snow storage. Where's that? Coming? Snow storage is outside of the 100 feet. We show, we show, I, I show areas, but it's um, right. Oh, they store all their snow up, up and back, okay. way up and back by their storage facility. I mean, that makes sense. It's logistically yeah. the yeah. best place to put it yeah. if they're there. That's where they. That's where they. They put it. No, the clubhouse is open in the winter, isn't it? For functions. Just for functions. One of the last meeting. One of the last meeting. The last time that they were here, they yeah, talked about, about this when they said they have board meetings. Yeah, because yeah. 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 they, they keep it open. They make room. They don't need the whole thing, so they said they pushed it. Yeah, so Chuck just asked me to go over. So when, when, when I model the infiltration chambers for the clubhouse, the catch basins, the rain garden, the, from the pre-development scenario, we'll have a 20% reduction in post-development peak rate of runoff and a 63% reduction in volume. What's the bottom of the rain garden? The bottom kind of thing? I think it's at 84.50. Yeah. Uh, 85. So it's shallow. That, you know, these rain gardens are only like 18 inches deep, 18 to 24 inches deep. Yeah, I, I guess my, my question it stems from the same thing as the last one is is does this back up in the, you know, it has capacity for the 10 year, but is it in essence backing up into the catch basin and into the, the trench drain in the 10 year condition? Is that part of the no, storage? No, no, okay. no. But, it, but exceeding the 10 year storm, there will be, then it will build back up. So I, I told CPDC and the abutters in high event storms that this, the trench drain and catch basin can, will overflow. Yep. But that's 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 like in a twenty-five or hundred-year storm. Otherwise, I can how take many, everything. How many inches is a storm like that? Seven inches. So, like a ten-year storm's four point eight inches. So I handle everything four point eight inches or less. Okay. I don't have any more questions. Jack. I would, do you have a, uh, a total area that you've added in the green space out front on the right? Is it a tree lawn or what is that being called? It's, it, we, we call it like a, gra a grassed island. I don't, I don't know the total area off the top of my head. And 
that was your question, Dave, was with the installation of the vertical granite curbing, it would discourage people from parking up there. The, the, the CPDC didn't like the looks of signs, neither did the club, having mm. signage right out in front of the club. Mm. But the vertical granite curbing for someone to get up and on there. Yeah. It's, um, so, you know, particularly when they have high volume at the, the compost center, and sometimes they park actually, on, right now, they park on both sides of, of Grove Street, yeah. which they're not supposed to. And then with people going in and out on a Saturday into the compost area, that's, it gets kind of dangerous there. So with this additional reduction in the width of Grove Street, it's going to be, I think it's going to be important that there isn't any parking there. So yeah. you're right, I think the, the vertical granite curbs will discourage that. And the town engineer was big on this layout because the, the other side of Grove Street, you can see how it goes, and there was all this open pavement here, right. and, and he, he wanted to keep more of a flow, natural flow, and open right. up some green space, which we agreed to. And I think the, the trench drain that you have there and the other two sumps that are up higher in the, in the, uh, um, in the, the parking lot, plus the additional drainage work that they did on Grove Street, is going to help mitigate the problem that there has been, you know, in the winter time. You come around that right where the ent entrance is, there's been a, a pond there, which becomes a skating rink. Uh, but that'll hopefully it'll eliminate that. So, um, in some previous notes I have, um, are we, it was uh, O&M plan for the rain garden provided? Yes. Okay. Um, and one thing that had come up in a previous meeting is the possibility of more plants downhill of the rain garden. But since your limit of work is pretty much right up against, right. Uh, it looks like there's already existing vegetation downgrading of the rain garden. So, yeah, the, com the commission, me, I, right here was was worried about the overflow area and if it would cause erosion on that. Um, downslope side. I mean, that hasn't been taken care of, but it's something that we will be watching. And if it needs to be addressed in the future, we have to, you know, we'll have to call the country club back in to discuss, you know, the, the erosion that's happening during raid events. Did, um, and so I'm sorry if this is repetitive. Um, did, did engineering review the drainage? And yeah, we've been talking about that all oh. night. I mean, we, um, yeah, we're just going to have to trust their review that the design storms are sufficient to prevent erosion and keep an eye on it. We're going to have to trust the engineering department's review? We'll trust that the design and the construction of this. So one conversation I had with engineering, I spoke to engineering this week about design storms, something I always seem to kind of harp on, um, you know, are, are we designing for the extreme events that we seem to be experiencing regionally or not? And what's the story? Um, and interestingly enough, um, engineering was sort of just telling me that their most, you know, their most frequent storm is a two-year storm. And um, it's pretty rare that Reading will get like a five-inch rain event. Um, but so yeah, just watch this and, and make sure it's functioning the way it needs to function. It stays wet enough to support a rain garden plant type and good thriving rain garden with no erosion down slope. That would be ideal. But your point is good, Anika, in that some towns are having us designed towards higher intensity storms. So um, there's a Cornell study and, and for the Cornell study, the 100-year storm for this area is 8.78 inches of rain. I think it's higher. Or maybe higher. It could be 9. I think it's 8. Yeah, 8.9. 8, 8, 8. 8.9. Okay, but it's up around 9 inches as yeah. compared to where at like 6.4 or 7 for the models we typically use in this area. But some towns are now adopting the Cornell rates for people to design on. I know Wakefield does. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think it's... I think it's um, I think it's smart planning for the long term if the historic data is telling us 
even if we're not experiencing it, I think it's smart planning going forward. Um, but engineering was telling me that some of some systems are actually um, for the for the more common events are over designed. So it but that might be changing the recharge, you know, in the hydraulics at other points in the system. Did engineering so, uh, did you get an answer to why wasn't engineering using the Cornell? Um, they, I didn't get a, I didn't get a strict answer on that, um, except them telling me that, you know, designing to the Cornell numbers, what they are seeing in practice in the systems is, um, this, a lot of the systems seem to be designed to much greater capacity than what they typically see. And that even when some of those big storms come through, it handles them fine. So, yeah. so, so that was their, but uh, I mean. No, I'm just wondering why they're not, Jack, do you know why they, why they ask for um, numbers other than you? Use of the Cornell numbers? No, it's just it's standard to yeah, ask. Just, for those. So there's a protocol called like TR55, and it should it has your rain values on it, and that's historically what everyone it's, has used. It's, I think it's, it's, a, I think it's, it's a good discussion to continue to have, right? Because it flies in the face of logic and the data we have. Well. But that's it's, another discussion. It's, a whole other, yeah, it's, another it's discussion. almost if you ever did your bylaw over or something, then you put it in. in, in I guess what I'm trying to ask is, just like our bylaw, we wouldn't use the previous version. Our, right. Is our uh, engineering department reviewing the stormwater based on a standard, and that standard hasn't been changed right now to the Cornell method? I think that's true, and I think, yeah, as Jack was saying, it's a function of the model they use because the model specifications and directions. Although the, although if they use TR twenty, it does point to the Cornell data. Right. So, so you know, in another permit, somebody's doing TR twenty, and you know, the Cornell data should be fair game in that scenario. So. I think it's a conversation to continue to have with engineering. But you kind of think about, engineering is thinking of our stormwater systems, right? Right. And they're but all sized to different storms. And so if they throw one in, it's, I, you know, I'll just. It's a good conversation, but we're here from <laughs> Meadowbrook. And I think right. that you've done what you have to do according to our engineering department. Mm -hmm. And yeah, maybe <coughs> in the future, Engineering will change to something uh, more appropriate. Well, I just wanted, yeah, what I was asking is, I was wondering if there is a code book, and when the code books change, then engineering will change. So they're just following whatever. I don't know, Mike, maybe you know a little more about it. I don't know. Um, it seems like it's an option to use the Cornell method. I think it well, is an option. They have to be following something, otherwise it would be arbitrary and mean nothing. Right. So that's not the point of it. So hopefully there's a code book, and when that's updated, they'll probably. There's a, there's a DEP stormwater policy. Um, it's this thick. You know, I know. I don't know if it's specified. Yeah. It, I think it, I think they show Storm the rainfall policy. charts. They from show. Them. I haven't looked, you know, in, at it in a while, but that's what everyone goes off. But over the last few years, some towns have now gone to the Cornell study in in, in lieu of. The so the Cornell study is like it's more recent. conservative. It's a more recent study. It's got. Got higher values based on just more recent data, and some are projections, and but it's certainly not held as a standard. You need to do this anywhere, but the, the topic is exactly what Nika said about resiliency and, and where we're going, and uh, it's starting to be adopted as more common, but not necessarily the standard. Jack, I have a question. Getting back to this specific site here, uh, Chuck had said that he had concerns about, you know, erosion from the spillways. Is, is there a, uh, an engineering design criterion specification of, on uh, square footage length and, and size of riprap that's in 
the spillway predicated on anticipated flow rate and uh, volume. There's, there's guidelines. I, I wouldn't say there's anything set, but I do have a spillway that's six feet wide, nine feet long with riprap and you know, it's it's holding basically the two and ten year storm. So and it, 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 it and it's level. It's a level spread right. for the most. So, what you know, in in the riprap will break up the energy out of the water. So you're not going to have a river right. flowing out causing erosion. And that that's why I have the length on it. So it, 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 there's guidelines, but there's nothing really set. So you know, most of that in there is that's there's not much you know pitch there other than when it actually goes down down slope from there into the, the wetland area. Right. Then right. That's where it starts to go downhill. So but like Chuck said, we'll have to monitor it when it goes in place, you know. Um, we'll it, it is it. pretty steep right there. It yeah. goes right down. It does, right from the edge of the rain god, no. Yeah. All right. Chair? No. Do you want to make a, do we want to make a motion? I mean a, a I don't see any particular issues. However, uh, I mean, we didn't really get any of these documents. I, uh, this is the first time we're really looking at it. We're looking at it on, on the screen. I don't, we typically, uh, I don't know, we typically like to have Do all this in hand. Do you need any more time to, to oh. understand it or? Yeah. Change anything? Yeah. I mean, I feel like we want to see what the, what's actually been submitted. So, so, Generally, what gets submitted as part of this revision would have been this new plan, the new stormwater uh, analysis. But did we get any any of that done? We did get it, and it uh, it was, I think, the fact that it was continued so many times that I never even thought about it until we got closer to the meeting. So okay, I have to admit I did expect to get continued again. So uh, I submitted. We submitted like a month ago. Okay. All, oh, all right. I'm sorry. <laughs> when in Chuck, sorry. Chuck's defense, every he'll no, 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 no. I say continue me another month, another month, and then everything went well in our last CPDC uh, meeting. Yeah. So Do we. Do I misremember getting so, a large package for many months? Sorry, yeah, I, I was thinking that this was That's, like you said. I might have said. Today. Okay. I might but have Mike, said this stuff. If you want to continue, no, this no. is fine because I thought, I thought we had one. They're not going to start until next fall. Yeah. So, Mike, are you sure you didn't get the? It would probably would have been October fourth because that's when right. Andrew got um, sent me an email. See, I never got the electronic copies. Andrew no. sent those to me and had those <laughs> from no, him. And I had some filing, so uh, then I probably have it. And then I, I'm, I was thinking that this was brand new. We just got this. It's been around. And I, Since June? I may Four. have sent it up, but Bob's saying I sent no, it up. No, but again, no, no. It's, it's I, it's thought been I thought I got a big package on this like six, eight months ago. And not, well, we did, but it's changed since then. Yeah. This is the latest mm -hmm. set. And right. I do remember mm -hmm. right, thinking, I think it was actually the meeting that I wasn't going to, but I have the, the packet for that, that, oh, they're actually going to, you're actually going to be here. Something new came, came through. So I'm sorry. I, I was thinking that this was like, just brand new. So, all right. I don't have an issue then. I don't have an issue with anything that's that's been presented before us. Ah, um, do we? Uh, okay. This is RDA. I make a motion for a negative determination. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Jack. Thanks. Wait, all this is under an RDA. Yes, it is. Huh. Remember that? Go figure. No, it's a pretty big project, but. So, motion to close, motion to issue. Just, just do that again. Please. I move we close. Mm -hmm. We didn't do We're going to consider that first one the closing. No. And the next one, this yes, next vote is going to be the issue. Okay. Thing. Motion to issue. Second. Second. All those in favor? Yep, well, I'm back. Well, okay, good point. Jackie, go on. It is freehand. I'm in the candy drop right in the moment. I'll be back. I have a pattern. It's a meeting, so you can close a meeting, you can issue a determination. You can close the door and issue. I don't want to talk about it. Power strip. 
Chair, can you uh, take the second item and just get a motion to continue Azalea to uh, November 4th? I make to a motion to continue Azalea Circle. Second. To the 14th of November. All those in favor? I just said, said 14. I just said continue. I just said 4th. Maybe I'm not here tonight. Wow. I may have said four everywhere. Now I'm saying fourteen. Right. Uh, Seven twenty notice of intent. Two seventy. Do we have? I think we do have a. Do we have a number for three sixty six Charles? We do. Okay. We have a. Conf yeah, that was a confusing email. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't read that. Oh, so I, I didn't. Azalea continued. Okay. Yep. Oh, I'm okay, Take a look at that and read it through. It's almost it's like it didn't get posted on the NOI lookup, but there was a number, Pam Merrill. I emailed Pam and she sent the, the number. And then they completely took the spot down. So there's no even no mention of this on it at all. Okay. So I'm not sure. It, it, are you guys reading that, that it was issued, or is she saying, I see that, you know, 0707. There's a spot for it. Oh, I'm not saying, I'm just reading that it's not saying that it's, I can't imagine why it's not issued. I mean, it's pretty simple. But what's your take? I haven't seen it. So this is the last correspondence you had from... So Chuck had sent an email saying there's still no DEP file number, and so I emailed Pam Merrill at DEP, and she wrote back, that's the last correspondence I had. I said, okay, that, that should be good. I was afraid maybe they didn't get the payment, or they didn't receive the plan, so they didn't issue. It sounded like something on their end, like the what they did. Is this the one you printed out? Yeah. That's what I printed out. So what number are you going with, the 07? 707? Yes. Even though, oh, Pam 707. Says, even though Pam says it's not there? She writes, oh, it, it does have a file number of 270-0707, right. which was issued back on October 4th. Jim freely reviewed and did not have any comments. <clears throat> it's, a con it's a contradictory email, because her next sentence the online That's database skips it, the number. It skips over. It sounds okay. like it was me, me, somebody me, me, else got okay. skipped over. Some, so someone database, should have taken this database. and put it on the database, and they, they went they from 06 to 08 and okay. didn't do anything for 07. But it's, she said, it what, it's, what it's I read like from it is, 07, 07. it was, there is a, it does have a file number which was issued. So they okay. did, they, did my, the first sentence looks to me like they issued it. But it is confusing. Okay. Do, um, we, do we accept this? Okay. So, this is a notice of intent for 270-0707366 Charles Street, Map 41, Lot 31, CJM Builders. And it's a public hearing is now opened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended, and the Written General Bylaws, Section 7.1. Hearings conducted in the following manager, manner. Applicant presents a proposal. Commission receives reports. Uh, the commission will address questions and comments to the applicant, and the public will then be given the opportunity to ask questions. And our intended sheet is back there. Hopefully everybody signed in. And at this time, I'd like to introduce the members of the Conservation Commission, starting on my right. Bob Hayes. David Pinnett. Rebecca Longley, Chair. Anika Scanlon, Vice Chair. Michael Flynn. Chuck Troni, Conservation Administrator. Okay, um, Brian Morin, co-owner of CJM Builders. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want me to review the whole scope. Uh, I know the last time you're supposed to do a site visit, I think, on the 23rd. Uh, I didn't see anybody, but I did mark the trees that were a question that we were talking about. Um, well, I don't know if you saw something different than what we talked about originally, or? looked kind of the same. 
there was more comments. Sure. Why don't we go over our site visit first, right. and then maybe Ryan can come back with some uh, more input. Is that going to be me, or is that? So we took a site visit on the 23rd, and we're there, I guess, later after you left. And our purpose was to review the wetland line, which hadn't uh, happened on the first site visit. So um, <coughs> I think that me and um, Chair Longley reviewed the line, and Anika Scanlon reviewed the trees. And I'll let Anika speak about the trees. Uh, we I don't have the numbers of the ones we've moved. I, but we I did, do. We did have a few flags that we moved, but we, we systematically went from one flag to the next, and um, I'll let Rebecca talk right now. Right. Um, started at 1A, but in one site, in, in, it was following along uh, a nice ridge, and, and below the ridge you could definitely see wetland vegetation. <coughs> Once we got to 5A, um, it seemed like it needed to come up about seven feet, um, and that would be more in line with that ridge line. When you say come up, do you mean northwest or southeast? No, I'm, I'm getting a little confused. Up gradient. Up gradient. Southeast. Okay. And then connecting that 5A through 7, 7A and taking out 6A. And after that, uh, A. 8A through 12A seem to look fine. So moving 7A up 7 feet. No, 5A. 5A, 5A. to the southeast 7 feet. And then what was the next one? Connecting it to 7A. Connecting it to 7A, okay? Something like this? Yep. yep. Um, this was just my observations of the trees, and I, I know, um, Dave, you were there, and, mm -hmm. yeah. So it seemed to me that most of the large girth trees, um, in the backyard were leaning towards the road. So, um, but some of the smaller trees, um, seemed to be straight and pretty solid and healthy. So I was going to propose um, keeping, so to the, to the right of the building, um, there's a six inch and a 26 inch. I was gonna propose um, keeping the six inch and lose the 26 inch. Um, lose the, and then to kind of continue around the line. The 42 inch is leaning pretty heavily towards the house, so that can go. The 26 inch is also leaning heavily towards the house. Is there any way you can mark the board as you're talking? I can, I can, I'm following along. All right. <clears throat> yep, so, um, then the two in the back behind the shed, there's a pair of 16 inches. Those are nice and straight and tall and kind of a pair. I think it would be good to keep those two. Um, they're not leaning towards the house. Um, but the six inch next to it is fine if that goes. There's other stuff around there. Um, and then to the left of the house, those three in the corner, those one of them was already dead. I think those three are fine to remove. Um, and the 24 inch up near the driveway. Oh um, no. <laughs> Chuck just messed up his. That's all right. I'll go back to it, but I think <laughs> it's all of Mike, just pull the bottom. Thanks. <laughs> all of this. Oh, oh screen. Yeah. So the 24 inch. Um, Watch, the, the magic of television. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Oh. That's yeah, talent. really close to So we all know where the 24 <laughs> inch is. <laughs> So the 24-inch looked pretty healthy to me. Um, 
Uh, and straight, of our and I, I don't see a reason to keep that one or to lose that it one. It might be because it's to the, the left like of the house. Yeah, it's yeah. black cherry. It's yeah. black cherry with ivy on it, but oh, it's five. It's within. It's in that, that was ninety-five my, feet away. That wasn't your read. No, that was not in my read at all. We had a lot of five. Well, it's, it's, it's nice. pretty. So, so just have so dueling axes. I'll get a red pen. What do you say, David? What do uh, you think about the cherry tree? I thought the cherry tree. Was why? Yeah. <laughs> because it was, I didn't think it was in good shape. Um, you know, Based on what it had, I thought it, 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 it had some dead limbs that were up on the top of it. Hey, when, when you say cherry tree, you got to tell us where we're it's looking. It's a black cherry. It's the it's one the that was to the, left, to the left of the house. It's the one closest to, to Grove Street. Closest the one to, in the front. Closest to yeah, Grove Street. Right. 24 inch. Yeah. Okay. The only one that was there. And, and I know that when we, we were, did the site, you had said something about when you were doing excavating, was one of the reasons why you wanted to take the some of the grading coming down. Uh, the ones to, to the right of the house. You had said that you were going to come down that way with the excavator to remove the the uh, patio, the patio, and the other. And that was one of the Ex reasons why you wanted to take those um, those trees to the right hand side of the house. Correct. Right, and that's why I was trying to give back. If you wanted some trees, yeah. more trees. Towards yeah. the back, and that would right. save any damage, you know. And, and, and at that same time, you had said that those two ones that are marked 16 inches behind the shed, you were, said you really didn't mind keeping those, right? It would when be we a did trade the, off. Pardon? It would be a trade off. Right, when yes, we were absolutely. there the first time, yeah. right? Absolutely, yeah. I do recall that. Yep. But I, I, I do remember you saying that <coughs> the, the, uh, those the six inches and the 26 inch <coughs> tree, um, that you wanted to remove them for ease of. Of bringing the, because that side is a little flatter, and you wanted to take the majority of the the uh, excavation out on that side of the house, and that's one of the reasons why you wanted to take those trees down. Right. So yeah. why why do you prefer that side versus the side to the left? Because the side to the left has more space, and probably you don't have to go down the stairs. Probably the grade. I don't think is, it was difference there's less because of a there's difference stairs in grade. near the road right and the right. stone wall that's the thing the stone wall isn't really shown on the plan but right. you know no. on the right side there's stairs and but that then, comes down though we're gonna that gets right. graded down yeah and then because it's a little, drop right now yeah that's gonna get floated grade wise down towards the back so it is kind of steep on the left yeah but just seems more area to work with on the left. I mean, do what you want, but. So it was only the cherry tree, Dave, and the rest you agree with, except for the, the, the 116 inch. Are you sure that there was not dead life on that 24 inch tree up in the other street? Yeah, there, there's dead parts of that cherry tree. Oh, I, I didn't think that that should stay myself. Did you That's notice you were looking at the cherry tree? Yeah, I didn't Bendy. notice it. I didn't notice the dead limbs. I didn't limbs. see a lot of dead limbs there's, there. There's dead, dead limbs that are up on the up in the upper story of that, uh, but it's not, I wouldn't say that it was a perfect, perfect looking specimen either. It's pretty gangly looking, but. A little maintenance and care. Mm -hmm. No, there's no maintenance and care that would bring that tree back to looking like a, a nice tree. Mm. It was. I think that's why we did the improvement. Some of the trees that we proposed were gonna be on that side. So we were going to be putting trees back on that left side. You know, we were planting trees, and they were going to be going on the side where that 24-inch tree is. So I mean, ultimately, that tree is 95. It's all by, by itself. Was it the cherry tree we're talking about? Is this 24-inch in the front? It's all by itself. It's 95 feet away from the wetlands. So yeah. If we're talking about getting a replacement, I think there's, hmm? right. there's things. So there's 11 trees proposed to be taken no, down. Anika would like, like to like say. Four, because there's two 16 inches. Those. Both of them. I only see one circle. Yeah, I just circled it as you can. Okay. Four. All right. So we have those trees on the table. We need to figure out what's going to happen so we can go to the next spot to see if they've met the tree policy. So I guess I know you. You guys just did this in the kind of back and forth, but <coughs> I guess, do you have any issue with the, the two 16 inchers and the, the six inch that we're talking about? Let's start with those three. Uh, 
if we ask for those to stay? That I I I would be happy to give the two sixteens, but would like to take the six. That's six. Okay. In consideration for just knowing what it's like to excavate from there and take the, the that patio that he's taken out of there is going to take many dump trucks of material out of there and to get in there and swing them with an excavator it's going to be very difficult to go around that six inch tree. Well, and how close are they to? How close is that to the twenty? Six inch or twenty five. Yeah, whatever. basically right side by side. I mean, that's another issue. Yeah. So in the six inch tree there's actually two 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 trunks yeah. for that tree. Um, it's a some kind of a fur, I think. That one's coming out, right? The the twenty six is come twenty six is coming out. We proposed to take those. Proposed and he had wanted to take the six inch tree out. Yeah. And and uh yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm no, not. You didn't. You didn't want that. It was these two. Those that two to keep. I was also saying this one, but you know, it's only oh, it's only yeah. a six inch. I, th I think it's I don't know, a cedar, or some sort of. It is yeah. It's either a fir or a cedar. Fir yeah, it's cedar. A, you it's know, a, a six inch tree in that area. Um, it's not as significant as the twenty four inch tree. Right. You know so. Right. And the other thing is the one that's behind it, the 26, that's leaning towards the house. I think once you cut the 26-inch tree, there's going to be an overstory that's going to have a big gap in it from the 6-inch tree because of where it didn't grow from the 26. Are you changing the grades throughout this side yard, the backyard? Yes. Did, am I missing? On, on, the, on the right side, on the right side. How much yeah. fill is how much is the grade going to okay. be brought up? I see it now. Okay, it's so ninety six. It's, com it's coming up yeah. about six inches in that. So where the six inch tree is that, that we're talking about, the ex we're, we're coming up about six to eight inches on grade there. There's, there's a proposed ninety four yeah, contour, 94 and the existing grade's probably like ninety three and a half, so six eight inches. Where does the 92 contour go? Um, so there's, where does the 92 contour go near the back left corner of um, the erosion control line? Do you see it? See I the see gray yeah, 92? Yeah, exactly. And then I, where, what happens to the 92? I don't know where it goes from there. Because we're talking about grading. That's beyond the, the work zone. Though. Yeah, that's beyond the, yeah. the one No, I know. I'm just trying to figure out how that 94, like, contour, like how close it gets to the 92 uh, around that erosion control line. I think uh, my sense was it was relatively flat it's back there. It's pretty flat back yeah. there. So maybe the 92, I would guess, just kind of stays with. Well, you can see the that it kind of goes. Lines and yeah, just kind of. It goes pretty well, there close was a ridge, to. Remember? Yeah. Yeah, it was over here, wasn't it? The, the ridge was here, but. If you kind of follow. It was higher the, up here. <clears throat> if you kind of follow the wetland line, and make it almost that wetland line almost follows the 92. Um, That's what I was wondering. 92. Um, kind of parallel. Yeah. Gradient yeah, line there. sense. So with the additional fill near the area of those three removed trees? To the left. The top. Yeah, so all the grading and new fill in the back, in that left corner, yeah, right there. Are there additional trees proposed? That's, that's all grass, existing grass right now? It's just scrub, it's scrub. Before we talk about yeah, proposed let's trees, let's get how yeah, many we're gonna take out. Go ahead. Right. Well, it's up to you guys. It's, you wanted four. And now we found out that there's <coughs> six to eight inches of fill around the 26 inch tree that you um, right. wanted to save. No, I think that's coming out. No, right, so. Six. It's the. Well, it's the six. 
out of those that cluster, the six is staying and the 26 is going. I guess I think I that's still up for debate. I don't know if everybody's kind of voiced their opinion about, you know, the six versus the 24. I um, guess from what, from what I've, I've heard, you know, I, I, it sounds like the 216s he's willing to keep. I, I would like those to stay if, if they seem to be healthy. Yeah. They're right in the tree line. You know, I don't have a, a strong opinion of why we would want to keep the 6-inch, particularly when we're taking the 26-inch that's right next to it out. You know, I would have some concern associated with the, the health of that afterwards, the condition of that afterwards. That's just going to fall in the, follow the same trend that that 26 is going to. Um, and then the, the one that's in the front, the cherry tree that's in the front, it's, you know, to me, that's 95 feet away from the wetland. It's all there, out there all by itself. I, I don't see a whole lot of value to that. So I, I think it's great that we can try to save those two 16s in the back if they're in great condition. I'm not a, I don't think I have a reason to oppose any of the other ones. I'm the same opinion with Mike. And I would add that I also think the 6 and the 26 are close to the, the building, the proposed close, building. Yeah. If you save yeah. one of yeah. them, it's going to be something that may come up in the future. Although it looks like it's 24 plus feet away, you know, it's still, it's pretty close. I don't. It, it sounds to me like there's good reason associated with this project and getting, you know, getting this in. There's good reason to take that six inch out, and it's just, to me, it's a six inch tree. But that 24 inch is far away from the house. It's a mature tree. It still had leaves on it. Um, I, I didn't see the dead so. growth, um, the dead limbs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I could go back out there um, and take a look at the tree a, a second time, um, or you could have a arborist look at it and give us a report on that one tree. Or, I mean, what's the so there's what's going to happen off the driveway? You said grading in that area. Or are you just going to kind of leave it elevated? Oh, it's, uh, it's grading. Yeah. What do you think the grade uh, is going to rise up gonna, around the 24-inch cherry tree? Yeah, they're going to flatten it. No grade right. changes around the 24-inch tree. Okay. I know that would help us, but we right, we're so not proposing not. any grading there. <laughs> but you're going to put... <clears throat> so let me ask another question uh, before you get into this. The, the cherry tree is standing all by itself. I know it has cherries, but maybe other people don't understand that. What is the value of having such a tree? Why is it a high value tree in this situation? The cherries do actually provide <laughs> food for birds. I mean, mm -hmm. um, they get drunk on the fermented <laughs> yeah. cherries. And there were cherries on, on that you know, small cherry tree. So, okay. Do you... Uh, I don't know the health of the tree, and I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> so we've been out there twice already. Dave says the health is poor. Um, I'm not going to... I like the tree also, but... Um, you know, it, it, you know the reason why it's coming down. Why, it, why did you choose this tree to come down? Maybe I'll ask you, oh, Brian. Did you have a reason? Um, it's, I mean, then my, it's not going to work in what my. It didn't wasn't working with the plantings that we were putting in. The right, design when got, he did the land. So yeah, we're going to go to the planting. So it doesn't work with the planting plan. I, and I kind of, I'm, I'm looking at it now. It's like he put three. Colorado spruce along that side. And then he put several more on the other side. So there's a kind of a balance, but <sighs> is Colorado spruce one of our natives? That's it's Colorado blue the, spruce, right? You're the tree person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I didn't. <sighs> I tell you, I wouldn't put it in a wetland. <laughs> But 
No, I don't. I don't see a need to take it. Uh, it's it's about as removed from the construction area. Yeah, it's pretty out of the way. It's not going to be filled over. Um, you know, if you want to get an arborist to say this is a completely unhealthy tree, who's reputable to, you know, that. <laughs> or we vote on it. Spice. And the other thing is, would you be willing to replace it with another cherry tree that might be planted closer to the maybe the I'd edge of the property? Choice. Pardon? I'd rather a different choice if you had another. Yeah. But I mean, that's you know another thing because we have a tree replacement policy, so that's where you could also use the tree replacement policy and plant another species of tree there to replace the one that you're taking down. So. The 24-inch tree that you're you're keeping is that the no is that a Norway spruce? On the right side, on the right side. Uh, it's a pine tree, I think. The one that's to the right of the, the 40. Can, I think yeah. that's pine tree. It is white pine. And you're putting in a Norway spruce? Oh no, yeah. Okay. Spruce. If leaving the cherry helps. Make the decision. Leave the cherry. Yeah. You know. I, I sure can. Right. Um. Yeah. <coughs> can I ask a non-tree question? Would you, or would you guys like to mm -hmm. finish a free? Do you want to take a vote on saving the the cherry tree or not? Is that the only thing that's in question at this point? I, I think so. Okay. I'd go for, you know. Well, okay. All those in favor of saving the cherry tree to the left of the house, raise your hand. All those in favor of removing the cherry tree to the left of the house, raise your hand. Okay, can I ask about the um, uh, concrete that's in front? There's a couple things that aren't on this plan. There's a concrete area in front of the shed in the backyard. So there's the concrete patio, and then there's this little, you know what I'm talking about. It's behind that one. It's behind that one? Yeah. And out down the back path. Are you talking right here? I'm talking about right here. Okay. Um, Oh. And down the path, there was a structure, like a cabinet, mm -hmm. with on a concrete slab with some sort of pipes coming out of it, with which Dave it had a lock on said it. might have been Between gas lines. lines. It, looked like, it looked like gas pipe and to me. So I a gas cock with a gas union. I guess I'm wondering, in terms of redeveloping this backyard and removing. I think it was excavating. That, wasn't that beyond the work line, though? Wasn't it? Oh, yeah. It was in the wetlands. I know. I'm just in the sort wetland. of. Yeah. yeah. I bring it up in terms of There's history right of what's yeah. been buried. It is a lot of stuff dumped back there. There's cars. Yeah. Oh, I saw an old I car. <laughs> so, whatever you saw, I don't know what it I didn't locate it either. And maybe I missed it. It's so overgrown in some areas back there. I could have missed by the shed. I don't know. Um, but I know when I went further back on that land, there's everything back there. Yeah, yeah there's a lot so back I, there. So I don't know, I don't know about the, the pipes. It, it could be. It's no, between I don't the, expect you to know. I just no. I'm bringing it up as yeah. there's stuff back there that. It's was it was it by the wetland line? I no, it's it right in between it. the work work line and probably around five A. It's right in between yeah, that somewhere. in that wooded area. Yeah. I thought it was actually behind five A. I thought so too. Yeah. In more in the wetland? Yes. Yeah. 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 If you take that path. And is that footbridge? Did, did I didn't even get to the no, footbridge. We, we went like 15 what? feet in max. So. It could be off Brian's property then. I, I don't know. If it's beyond 5A, this is the real lot line. Oh. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. Could be off the is. property there, line. There's stuff on the <coughs> back. You know, there's a lot of. So what I, so what I was sort of bringing up was during excavation, um, you know, um, you know, are you going to pull up the pad that's near in front of the shed? On this side? Yeah, on, on your property. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, is there anything else that's not shown on the plan that you're going to take up and excavate and remove? 
like in the front of the house, there's, I mean, it's outside of the house. I don't even know if I saw that concrete. Yeah. That's probably why we didn't, I don't even remember seeing the concrete pad in front of the shed. Right, it was like, like a little ramp. It almost looks like somebody tried to make like a, a poured concrete, like a raised muff. garden bed or, I don't know. Looks like a, looks like a footing for a shed. Does it, it does look, no. it does. Uh, like he's going to have to repave the driveway and things like that, but if that's outside the 100 foot right. buffer. But right. the, there's, the driveway's in disrepair, yeah. basically. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just bring it up because it sounds like there's some history to this backyard that you, might be a, a variety of surprises as you go through. Hopefully not. I hope not to. I hope not to. But visually, just yeah, just looking at it, yeah. it's kind of reasonable to think. So so if anything comes up that you don't you haven't gotten a permit for, you know, just come back to us for yeah, no, a modified permit. Yeah. Is that thing that had the, the reeds and the, the little tub? Is that outside the hundred foot as well? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Did you the see micro that? pond. It was uh, in front of the yeah. where the, the uh, my vision is after the fact. <laughs> this is, it's in front of the fireplace. You have to look Wait, after. Can you go like this? Yeah, I can't look now. Yeah. No, I'll be going to go there in two months and you'll be like, oh, it's a nice place. It sounds like we're winding down. Um, are you, Chair, are we going to ask for a new plan with the changes to the wetland line and the trees? Yeah. Okay. I, would, I would like to do that. Can I ask a question? So looking at, at what I drew up there with the new 5A, is it fair to say that it's basically just a line from 4A to 7A? Is that what you have on your? No, 5A to 7A. Because there was more, there was a kind of like a, we fall on a ridge. Did, did, did you did you say 5A had to move up gradient seven feet? Yeah. So Mike Mike's point might be a good one if you where he moved up, it's almost connecting 4A to 7A. Fine. Like if if everyone's okay with that, I'm sure. fine with that. If he drew it to scale, you know. I know. I know. <laughs> I mean, that's a true feet. Feet. I've got quite the eye. Okay. Do you, do you think? I know. I know what the scale on the screen is. The field is probably more accurate. That's, however, that's it good, works out that, of the plan. That's a good then. point. We can just move it seven feet up, and, and I trust Mike's artistic ability and <laughs> estimation ability. Right. But right, and if we're gonna redo the plan, what did we decide on the six-inch tree by twenty-six? Gone. 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 Okay. I only have two sixteen-inch trees. Does anyone know what kind those are? Uh, Lucky. In the back. I think those are oaks. I can't remember yeah, now. So it's they just were, the they're deciduous. Yeah, they are deciduous trees. I don't remember the species now, but they were pretty tall. All right. So there is a planting plan. Mm -hmm. Does it compensate for? Mm, don't think so. Compensate for the trees that are mm -hmm. getting cut. So that's the 25 foot buffer line where the edge of lawn is. species that are going down the left hand side of the house are those native plantings, those are wetland plants? The, or bushes? They wouldn't, you wouldn't want to put wetland plants in a lawn area, right, no. but you would want a native for yep. a replacement because that would be within the hundred feet. But I'm not, I, I don't know about Colorado blue spruce. Sounds like it's from Colorado. It is. <laughs> well, is that, that's what proposed on the left hand side? Yeah, and there's some on the right as well. Asian 
going to sweeten my back, yeah. Thank you. No. It's always been here. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, really. I'm about as native to my backyard as it gets. <laughs> I would like to reduce One, two, the amount three, of lawn four, in the five, back six, seven, eight, left eight, corner. Eight. Is there a way we can... What do you mean by that? So, the shrub line right now seems to go sort of yeah. like that. And a bunch of trees are getting removed here. Um, but I was kind of hoping the, the lawn line would kind of match the fill, the 94 fill, and just kind of stay and not encroach like this into the 25. Are they, Jack, are they trees? I mean, there are three of them that are being removed back there. And now I see the existing tree line comes this far further in, but is, are they trees? I think what's throwing people is this landscape plan is showing lawn right to the 25 foot right. line, which is not happening. Okay. So, so the, the, that 94 contour that you were talking about, Anika, yeah. is like in this area right. here. And, and so, you know, the, the rendering shows lawn right to the 25 foot line, which isn't reflective of the true limit of work. No, but if you look at this plan, yeah. It's showing a tree line like this, and those three trees are here, right. and your 94 is coming around like this. I understand what you're saying with against this, but she's talking about this tree, <coughs> I think this tree line. Okay. Th and really, I don't know, I don't know what was there. When I locate the tree line, I'm taking the canopy. So this is the what trees. he's showing uh, okay. grass, right? He's going all the way to the end. But this is really weird. So the only mature trees are these three. Even though I showed the tree line like this, that's just from the canopy of the, of the tree extends mm -hmm. out that so way. So the lawn's not going to extend beyond the limit of work? No. Okay. And the limit of work's already in place if you, okay. when you run at the yeah, site. Yeah, I saw it. So yep, it's well towed in. So when they show they show lawn going up into this, this right. is going to stay natural. Okay. All right. I'm fine with that. Okay, so we're getting, um, we're going to get a new plan. Chuck, um, will you take a look at this? Have you, have you seen the planting plan? I've, I've seen the planting plan. In your estimation, does that fulfill our well, replacement? What we say is gone now? So we're only keeping two of the ten. So it needs eight replacement trees. And they have to be native, and I'm not sure we had. They need to be within the hundred. They are. These, these are. Okay. These are not. These, these are, barely. <laughs> right. Barely. Right. <laughs> to put that one back there. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, we need to take a look and see if these are acceptable. Um, native plants because of the plants that you're taking or the mature trees that you are taking you know they do provide habitat and things of that nature so do you want to ask for a cherry tree so my, my thought is that we've done this in the past so we can just condition that we need either eight trees and one can be a cherry or something like that um, on the plan to be, uh, you know, located in the field, you know, at whatever time, because I don't think you're planting them now. And that could be done with the Conservation Commission or just me or however that mm -hmm. happens. And if it doesn't happen, then we have, we revert to the tree policy, which would be he needs to, you know, write a check for the eight trees. <laughs> Uh, I'd like you still to take a look at the trees that are being planted on either side of the house because they have Norway, they're, they're Colorado blue spruce, and there's also Norway maples that they're planting. Well, so can I just, I, I'd say, you know, I, I guess I don't have an issue. As long as it's eight, I would like them to be native. <coughs> I, I guess as a condition, just like Chuck is saying, that he's showing eight right now. I'd like the condition that we, he confirm and confirm with Chuck that these are Okay. Native species, and if they're not, then let's 
find something that's well, amenable to him. Do we have a list of native species you can yeah. take a I look thought at? He, I thought the guy that did the design went in and got a list, and that's how he created this. That's what, that was the protocol that I told him, make sure you go in there, get what Chuck, you know, mm -hmm. Chuck had requested this plan, not for Jack to prepare, but okay. for someone else to prepare it. So he did go into this depth to yeah. do that. So, um, so we'll have to double check it. Yeah, yeah to me, I, I would just make that a condition to make sure that, but otherwise I don't think we need to necessarily, particularly since, uh, I don't know what, what's the cover. That was Bruce's native or not. Yeah. Okay. Um, Anything else? So do I have a motion to continue? Well, so that's what we're, we're working on, so. Well, we're looking for a new plan, correct? A new plan? Right. Uh, Right. Uh, right. With the changes that we discussed tonight. Mm -hmm. I guess so there's a motion on the floor. Does anyone second? I'll second. All those in favor. <laughs> Do you abstain? I, I, I'll abstain. Okay, fine. So it looks like it's going to be continued. Um, all right. No. Good night. So to November 14th. Can I ask just a question? I know we continued predicating on getting a new, a new plan. Can we close and then vote to issue in the next meeting? Because we only have one meeting in November and one meeting in December. I don't want to hold this guy up in this process for going forward with the, pr the project. Well, we just well, voted think, to continue, yeah, I so think Mike we didn't was trying to, to I don't know if you guys were, uh, on, you know, in, anyways, that's what Mike was saying. I mean, are we going to wait right now for a plan because we only have one meeting left in November and we really understand it, it just needs to be <coughs> created. That's, that's what he was asking. So when there was a motion to continue, we wanted to know if you guys agreed that we're going to wait just for a plan. I thought it was a motion to not continue. I'm sorry. No. Okay. No. All right. You know what? Let's no, take I this off the table. No, I don't think it's let's worth continuing for that. No, I'm sorry. Let's I, make a motion to I rescind that last thing. Let's just rescind it without okay. it. <laughs> I was trying to find out if Blue Spruce is native to Mass and it's not. Okay. I just wanted to bring everyone back to, you know, Thank you, what, Jack. We're, what we're talking about, because I, I think when you guys agreed, we were both. I was sitting there, just kind of surprised. Like, okay. no. um, anyways, what's happening is we we need a plan. We need some added conditions, which are not in the order of conditions that I wrote. Okay, but what we have to add is saving those two 16-inch trees and. And the concrete pad's going to be pulled, and then we're going to have the condition to confirm that the trees are native, and those, whether it's 10 or 8 trees, are going to be located in the field, which is another way of saying, we're going to push this off, and you can come up with a plan in the spring, or we can just basically have everything on the driveway, and we'll go out and we'll figure out where these things are going, okay. and we'll make sure they're native, and... The only other thing that I'd like you guys to add is we had this big discussion about a cherry tree. Do you want some fruit-bearing trees out there? Sure. One I'd of like them should see be, that. One of them should be a fruit-bearing tree, in my opinion. And then ask them to save a little apple tree that's on that left yeah, hand side. There's an, yeah. an apple tree that's growing right on that down slope. It's not a fruit is tree. A building like faux pas to have like <laughs> fruit trees on the property is <laughs> like building <laughs> value. Oh, oh really? Because when they mow the grass, it kills the grass. Mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. There's always a logic, you know. I guess yeah. I guess yeah. There's no. There's probably like the best tree is like one that like grows golf balls or something, right? You know, then then everyone. Goes. They have a hybrid non fruit bearing fruit tree. <laughs> I mean, it's something up against the you know in the back and yeah, you know in that area that's not to be touched would make a lot of sense if it was fruit bearing back in that area. So. So then, I guess my question is, can we close I predicated? I make a motion to close. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? That's predicated on those conditions and the changes that we've asked for. We haven't issued. Chuck's going to make right. the changes. Okay. And, and, but we're 
set to make the changes, receive the plan, and essentially. But the thing is, if we don't vote the issue right now, does that again yeah. back them up for a month? So you have two options: wait and review the order of conditions, or if the conditions are just so understandable, so you know, which I I can read them again, that we just you make a motion to issue uh, as amended. I would, I would so moved. So we make I mean, a motion to. That. And then it needs to be second, and then you need a vote, and then you need a majority. So. Okay. okay. Do I hear a second? Uh, I would just like to add to that that I also don't want it officially issued until we do receive the plan, right. the revised plan. Right. Okay. Um, so as amended and, and re yeah. receiving the revised so plan. So we, we can, we've done this before, can we vote to issue and then come in and sign it? When you've written it, no, like, can you send it to us I electronically? I thought we did it one time where we signed it and said, Chuck, just don't yeah. don't officially issue this until you've actually got the plan. So we have, tw okay. we have 21 days to issue okay. after the vote. Okay. So you guys can come in. But the problem is, during when it's closed, you can make all the changes you want. Right. As soon as we issue it, it's like locked in stone. Right. So if you want to take a minute and review what we've written down, or what's been written down, or you want to re-review it, I know that Jack has what, looked at it. Yeah. Okay. Jack, do you have any I issues? This um, is what you sent us earlier. Or not. Did I send this one to you? Because I, one I wasn't able to get out. I thought this was the one. That no, I think I sent out Ashley Place. I sent out uh, Ashley. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm a little confused. <laughs> By doing what you're suggesting we do now, the close, right? That was the vote. We already, we already closed, closed, right? They, so, we closed. he can start work. No, we have no. to issue. We, still, we have to agree to an issue. Right. So, did, were you planning on doing this this fall? Yeah. So, I guess my question was, is there anything that this additional conditions are going to do that would have precluded him from no. starting anyway? It sounds like we're really looking to find out what the trees, trees. are right. that so are out there and everything, everything else right. is yeah. really... Doing what he wants to do. But if we vote right he now to issue... He doing what he wants to do until he gets the right. signed permit from us. But if right. we vote to issue, there's still a 10-day period, right? So we have plenty of time in that 10-day period. That's just a period. No, we can't. When we, as soon as we issue, you, you guys are done. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, no more input from the commission after you issue. From, but from there, those are all barriers to right. getting started prior to, you know, whatever no, weather no, elements that have to, yeah. Or whatever it is. Right. As a practical matter, he's not going to plant until next spring. No. Right. So, <laughs> and we're, we've got the option or we're going to be allowed to, to you know, guide him through the type of trees and, and where they w we want them planted. So I don't think that's a, a pedi impediment to, to him going forward. That's what my thought was exactly. So I'm trying to help the gentleman get his job done. If the planting isn't I, I think the wording impact. is leaves enough wiggle room that that's what we're looking for for us to, to issue at this point. Uh, yeah, so uh, save the two 16-inch trees, uh, pull the concrete pad. Um, I'm in a I mean, can can we could also say to that, and any other buried trenches. You, yeah. you don't know what you're going to find out there. That's the true with any I mean, I think it would be more important to write something like, you know, there are, you cannot um, bury, you know, concrete and construction waste out there that needs to be clean fill. And oh, anything you find needs to be pulled out. So I'll write something. Absolutely. To, I, to I don't know. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, because if one of the, if something buried there leads to the underside of that concrete pad that had those other pipes coming out of it, I mean, we don't know what's buried. We don't know what's out there. But um, But in general terms, in, in all order conditions, there's, it, there's something there's that's included for, you know, things that come up on site. That would need approval from exactly. the commissioner. That, so exactly. that's, that's in the, the order. order. If that's, they find yeah, something right. that's not talked about, that's in the exactly. existing orders anyway. So that's already in there. So, um. so we have four new, only well, we four conditions: uh, the tree, the concrete pad. If the there's lawn. any construction debris um, that's the lawn, found, it can't be 
be buried. Lawn will go past the limit of work. The lawn will not exceed beyond the limit of work. It's on there. And then yeah. change in the wetland flag. And the wetland flags. So my what plan will? changes will be the yeah, and I don't have flag five A will move <laughs> seven <laughs> feet up gradient. No. Just to connect to flag seven A. I'll change the associated protective buffers to twenty five, thirty five, and hundred based on the new line. I'll show the two 16-inch trees <coughs> to be saved, mm -hmm. yep. and we show the concrete pad by the shed to be removed, plus the other conditions that Chuck just highlighted. But those are the, the those are the three main plan plan changes that I have to make. Right. I'm good with that. And so now I'll just hold this until I get I get the plan, and we'll make a condition that we either receive a invitation to whatever day you're going to plant or a new planting plan that would be approved by the commission. I mean, I don't know if I get you involved again on that, but, but you know, sure. however that happens. So do we get a motion to issue? With, with uh, as amended. As amended. So moved. I'll second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. How many candies did you eat today? <laughs> Two. Oh, For the know. record. No. <laughs> trees were town trees or not? No, I didn't find that out. He was um, going to call the, the tree warden. No. Yeah, I think he yeah. had a phone call in. So, this is okay. Sugar high for the Sox game, that's all. <laughs> okay, this is a continuation of notice of intent 270 0708 30 Ashley Place, map 39, lot 190, Mahoney. And we had a site visit uh, on Tuesday, and um, understood that um, the applicant wants to remove two trees in the front. One of them is within uh, the 100 feet, and there's another tree in the back he will remove, and the, uh, possibly another one. And there's some, addition, there's some additions <coughs> to the existing property, and I guess they're taking down something. So if you want to explain that. Um, 
the tree in the back? No, no. I, the, the project <coughs> what the project time, is. Right? Um, project was explained at the last meeting? No, no, I yes. wasn't here. The, uh, oh, sorry. So, but I, I went out on the site, so I kind of saw what was. So you don't have to explain it again. Yeah. That? Were you there last last meeting? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess the, the, the big purpose of the, the site visit was there were some questions associated with the wetland? Right, so there was one wetland flag, 6A. It went further towards the east, and we eliminated that 6A. No longer. And the plan you have in front of you is the revised plan. Okay. Um, there was a question on two of the trees that we were proposing to plant in the backyard and uh, concerns about, you know, pretty the older story and whether or not those trees would survive and um, we left it as um, to have it be conditioned and to have the trees to be determined um, where the proposed stairs are I'm not sure we've never done deck, that before I'm just joking with just um, a expression that the existing 15 inch tree I know you get this that's right behind the house. It's a nice red maple tree. It's actually growing almost onto the house. Um, the homeowner would like to keep that uh, if possible. <coughs> I'm not sure if he'll be able to because you're going to have construction equipment around there and the roots may get damaged, but he really likes that tree. He planted that tree 20, 25 years ago, so he wants to try and keep it. So that tree will be kept. Um, Directly to the south of that, there's a 16-inch cherry tree. <laughs> and uh, he would like to relocate the shed behind the dwelling to that location where that cherry tree is. So that cherry tree will need to be removed. And um, as Commissioner Longley had stated, there's a tree near the entrance of the driveway. It's 12-inch. I believe that's a maple tree. Uh, that's outside the buffer zone. That'll be removed out front, and the one in front of the walkway will be removed. That'll be uh, replaced. Both of those trees out front will be replaced. He wants to put those back. So it's really just that one um, cherry tree. He's putting them. He's putting a tree right back where the, these are being removed. The two out front. Yeah. Yes. Is there something wrong with the two out front? I'm sorry, I wasn't. Um, they're dying. They're dying. They look bad. <coughs> they're they're small, too. Right, and um, there was some concern about getting in touch with the tree warden. Uh, he hasn't done that yet, as far as I know, but that's on the list for him to do. Okay. Um, so as of right now, there's just one tree in the backyard that we would definitely like to cut. That's the six. That's the six inch cherry tree. Yeah. And then we, we were discussing about possibly um, putting some vegetation uh, behind the existing deck. Uh, there's a spot over there, so possibly planting over there. There was a discussion of whether it would be a tree or two shrubs, and I believe the commission offers that. <coughs> So, and I don't think we got beyond that. Mm. And that's why we decided to, with, with the fact that we don't know if one of the trees by the stairs are coming down, and that's going to kind of be determined throughout this, well, this process is taking place of the addition being built and whatnot, and to be more involved in the location of the trees that are planted, we decided, uh, again, to agree to plant the trees tree locations will be determined in the field in the spring um, so the Commission just needs to tell us and I think the chair should speak about this I think what, can we also make that conditional show, show another baby <laughs> conditional <laughs> We also make that conditional on whether that, that exists. Great timing, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> the existing 15-inch tree actually does come down. It doesn't come down uh, because when when uh, 
I went out to that site just looking at moving the shed and putting and excavating for the foundations and so forth. I know that the gentleman that, that owns the house planted that tree in it, and it's a really nice looking tree, notwithstanding the fact that it's actually growing into the house and it really severely needs to be pruned back. But anyway, I understand his, his you know, personal, personal feelings and attachment to the tree, but there's a possibility that that may not stay, it may not make it. So that might be another consideration that we're looking at in the spring. So I don't, have any, I don't have any problem with waiting until the spring to uh, determine that. Plus the other thing is, is that you know, these trees that are out in the front, if we find out that they're actually town trees and street trees, they're really not jurisdictional to us anyway, so. No, but it's important that they, uh, we just, we had to make sure that we've told the owner <coughs> right. that he needs to contact the, yep. the uh, tree warden just to make sure that, you know, we don't want to get, a lot of times one commission hears about something and forgets to pass it on, so yep. we just want to, we just want to keep saying that, although you've heard it many times, that he needs to be contacted about those trees. Now that I've composed myself, <laughs> um, I do have a question. Is, is that what There's you still some said? left of the box. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> um, the the uh, twelve inch maple out front that's in the hundred foot buffer. When we talked about this, you said it had to be planted back behind the house, but it's in the hundred foot buffer zone. Can it be? Can it be planted back, the, uh, you know, in the front, Chuck? Yes. It can anywhere in okay. the anywhere in the hundred. All right. Foot. <clears throat> I, I misunderstood you then on, on site, at the site visit. So. Yeah, we're. I, I was just <coughs> lucky to approve trees underneath the the uh, existing overstory. Yeah. Yeah. So so and and with that in line, you know, I, I wouldn't even necessarily be opposed to, uh, you know, generally I don't like to take out mature trees and and put back bushes, even though that part of our policy, but I, I think bushes are probably fine here because there is so much cover and that that would kind of put up more of a lower s storage here too if, if there were, you know, just within our usual quantity. I feel like that's a good filler underneath the, the <coughs> current tree coverage that it, it got. Um, the, well, we can talk about this after. Sure. Th there's there's not much open space. Um, I mean, Mr. Mahoney is willing to give up any yard he has to plant a tree. Yeah. And it's nice to have someone like that. Absolutely. But I really don't think he should plant a tree next to his deck. Exactly. You know? <laughs> so that's and that's exactly it. I don't see a whole lot of space here. I, I you know whatever gets planted needs to be considered that there's a lot of mature trees out there. There's a lot of mature coverage maybe something lower and more of protecting. And he's he's going, always, so. uh, he had bought some trees, Japanese maple and some other trees that were out there that he's trying to plant underneath that, you know, overstory kind of in the wetland area. And, and you know, it's, it's pretty sparse out there. There's not much, there's not many trees or saplings out there. So, so it's I, not gonna work for too long. I guess I'll just ask this now. Uh, I, I did read the order earlier, but the draft order earlier, but I don't remember reading this section. If we typically have some language in there about the homeowner or any future homeowner can't come back and ask for okay. trees <coughs> that are closer to be removed. That should be in there. Uh, it's, it's usually around 19 or 20. The, the reality is that that 15, at some point, maybe it's not Mr. Mahoney, but somebody is probably going to want to remove that if it's that close and if it does live and it's that close <coughs> know what you were thinking yeah okay so that it's outside the 25 so it wouldn't qualify for this okay for it. okay that's I just wanted to make sure we weren't gonna put something uh, some sort of that, that that cherry tree could never be removed for its <laughs> one right next to the stairs? Yeah. That's a cherry tree? Mm -hmm. Potentially a maple. No, I'm well, sorry, maple. that's that's not the cherry. That, that's a, that's, that's a maple. That's a maple. That's a maple. No, uh, I want to just make sure that our language, our typical lang boilerplate language, didn't make it so that could never be removed. Yeah, I was going to say, because at some point in time, you might, I, I was going to say, that, and that's a good point, because 
that should be like one of those discretionary things as situations dictate the future. Well, they may not be able to save that tree. Well, it may not live, but then it may just become a hazard, you know, mm -hmm. in five years, too. Well, the limbs, mm -hmm. some of the limbs are a hazard right now. Okay. I don't know why I want to keep it. Oh, okay. planted it. Yeah, he has attachment to that tree. Mm -hmm. Plant another one. A uh, quick question, the proposed 1,000-gallon dry well, um, that be it. Yeah. we're not, hold on, thanks. It's on the plan. Yeah. I mean, it's moving. Is that, is that infiltrating the construction, the new roof? Yes. <coughs> and um, has that got a perforated bottom? Like, is it just going to act as a giant infiltrator, or how's that going to act? There's not a details on here. No, um, there isn't. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if it's how the construction is going to be. It's, I'm assuming it's like a typical dry well. I, I don't know if the commission has a preference. If you have a preference on what type, we can certainly um, use that type. I, I assume it's something that's going to affect you allow for infiltration. Right. So Absolutely. So just, you know, as long as it does. Okay. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. You know, because I don't have a schematic. Right. So and I I'm didn't just, think to put I've it seen some dry <clears throat> wells with solid bottoms, so. Didn't we ask to have that moved? <coughs> because you're trying to save that tree. And it was supposed to be moved to the side. I think we asked. Well, that. I think Dave asked, asked that. Is that has to move back back a little bit into the sign. I missed that. Yeah, I'm I, sure you asked it, but yeah. I missed it. I, I can revise the plan to show that. That's not a problem. So move the drive wall uh, closer to the wetland or closer to the southerly property line? Well, pick a spot that's not within the drip line of a tree um, and close enough to the construction so it makes sense. Okay. It looks, and it does look like you're going to bring it up well, gradient and kind of it. by the corner because you are taking out that cherry <coughs> I don't think there's. I don't think there's many other spots okay. that it can go. Nothing to do with anything. Whatever. Yeah, whatever works design-wise. Is, is that oriented yeah. that way for a particular reason? Could you same just turn it 90 same degrees same. and accommodate the, within the 10 feet of the house or whatever? Plus, get a little. Yeah, that that's a great idea. Does that work? Yeah, rotated 90 degrees. Absolutely. Yeah, it has to be a certain distance. Because they all have, they have inlets on all four sides of them. So yeah, I know the right. it doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. say when that was happening. If that accomplishes what yeah. No, I think that would that's a great idea, Jack. All right, well you you'll look at the drywall and see if we can move it up. Yeah, or or what about rotating it? Like something, yeah. Expansion? yeah. Okay. Something, yeah. Okay. I'm not that concerned about where it is. Where it is now is gonna make it difficult to save that people. The other thing is when when I asked about the drywall before it was we didn't know whether that 15 inch tree or the six inch tree were going to stay and if, and if <coughs> we did excavate for that drywall it was going to impinge upon the roots of both of those trees mm -hmm. now they're going to take the six inch cherry tree out and move the shed over there so that one's gone anyway the maple's not going to make it no the maple's not all right really so, don't think so but so i'm not i'm not that worried about the no. one if that is the location no i'm not either about the order of conditions if we're there. Sure. So I think we are. Okay. Um, in the findings, item one, 
um, we should probably add a note in item one of the findings about the flagstone. That's going to be removed. Wasn't that, it was that in two? Uh, proposed project is to remove deck, construct addition, screen, porch, bulkhead, roof, top infiltration, to remove trees outside of the buffer zone, replace trees, number relocate shed, associate three. It's in three. Page 15 at the top. Remove the flagstone. Oh, okay. Okay. Two words. I'm searching for one. Okay. Um, and then maybe in part two and finding two, we can add the infiltr under rooftop infiltration. You could maybe put in parentheses including a 1,000 gallon infiltrating drywall. So under the first number two or in findings this list of number two. Drywall isn't specified. It says rooftop infiltration, but we don't specify the drywall. But it's specified in the plans. Yeah, it's easy enough to add that. I have I, I wrote um, it right there, and then, mm. um, and um, something else in there about re replacing. When we're talking about subpart three of of two period, replacing trees. Um, per the tree replacement policy. So that, Chuck, I think that deals with the comment I emailed you today. So. Yep. And the flagstones are in there, so. Yep. And the tree policy yep. and the thousand gallon. All right, so all those will be yep. added. Um, otherwise, I think the order of conditions is fine. Any other comments? Do you have any more? I make a motion to close. Second. Those in favor? And I make a motion to issue the order of conditions as amended. Second. All those in favor? One question with the dry well. Do you want me to change the plan for that? Is that what I'm doing? It really depends upon. The only reason why that came up before was the trees, and it's right. the trees are kind of wild cards at this point. If the trees have come out, I don't think there's any need to change the orientation of the position of the drywall. Okay. I'm more than happy to do it. I just wasn't sure. So. Okay. I'm sure during the project if they need to move it significantly, right. we'll, we'll see them again. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. That's not, that's supposed to be the property, right? I, I assume so. Sure. I feel like I was missing out on that. <laughs> <I'm done now. laughs> After that one. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's another one we was writing for today. Can't wait to see what Tim caught on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> hey. So, do we need to continue Castellano, the two of them? Yep. Okay. We have a motion to continue notice of intent 278-0705, 1503 Main Street, Lot A, Map 60, Lot 11, Castellano. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Do I hear a motion to continue notice of intent 278-0704, <coughs> 1503 Main Street, Lot B, Map 60, Lot 12, Castellano? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Oh, I mean, before you go, where is that? 
Is that still with the engineer? I love it. Um, well, the engineer who designed the project uh, had a death in the family. So things are kind of dragged out for that reason. Last time I talked to the, one of the engineers from the town, uh, I believe the comments hadn't been addressed yet. Uh, is there anything different, Chuck? I have not, no. Okay. And we just talked about it after that fight visit. Right, so we need to make sure that the town engineer is happy before we come back. Okay. Go from there. Uh, my client's not going to construct it this year. He's already written that off the table. Um, so. I didn't know if there was another hurdle beside the, the drainage plan that was. The only other thing in question was uh, the trails. Was it the trails? The Reading. It's not open. I'm running Open Land Trust. Open Land Trust. And kind of working that out with my client in terms of <coughs> how much land and the final details. But as far as I know, he's still talking to them. And I believe that's moving forward. So. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, old new business. Um, there's a request to end yearly stormwater monitoring for the Goddard school and uh, we got a letter. Yeah, a letter. Uh, I'll just read the letter, put it in the record. Uh, we have a stormwater management system at 10 Torrey Street, which has routine inspections by uh, Christopher Sparagis of Williams and Sparagis located in Middleton. Since we opened in 2010, our inspections have consistently shown that our levels are within tolerance. The inspection shows that stormwater management system is operating per design, including the oil and water separator, infiltration system, and all catch basins. Based on these uh, consistent findings, we are requesting ending the yearly monitoring of the system and switching to an inspection of every seven to eight years. So um, that's what they're requesting. I have followed these. And when I've seen that the levels haven't gone up over long periods of time, because this kind of inspection costs money, I've called these places and said, make a request. Get with your engineer and see what's, see what's reasonable. And we got this letter. So um, is that length of time between inspections going from one year to, to eight years? Is that? usual and customary when you change this so it seems to me to go to go from one year to eight years is a long period of time in between there's a lot of stuff that can happen especially with water events and flooding events that can happen in in the course of eight years and it's only been eight years and it's only right it's only been that length of time it just what you I think what you're missing is there's not been any cleaning and it's no. never gone the, the um, sediments haven't risen to uh, where it's recommended, a uh, factory recommended cleaning. I think that's like 20 inches or something like that in these ones. So, you know, if it's gone up four inches in eight years, we got a while. So, uh, I mean, I, I agree with what they're saying, but I can provide more information if the commission would like to see how far, uh, how much the depth of sediment right now. <coughs> I guess because I don't know it is is seven or eight years like a standard time frame. I think is, what they're saying is it's not, it's not there's nothing happening. I mean it's not it's gonna it's gonna be seven or eight years and it's still gonna be four and you know five inches now. Yeah. And they won't need a cleaning. So four I, inches I, within I, eight years. That tells me it could be eight inches within the next eight years. No, and I, I don't know. I mean, no, I, is, I, it is it four inches now? Is it four inches? If that's right, the manufacturer's recommendation is to clean it 20 inches yeah. or more. Right. That's 20. That's, that's, that's going to be like 32 years of. Right. Now, yeah, you're up in that 32 years before it needs to be cleaned. Yeah. Right. So, and you wouldn't go 32 years just like you're not going to go. Right. What, if a, what is it, 30 years with a right. roof or right. 40 years no, with a roof? No, yep. it's. And you get worried so about, bad. you know, five years prior to it. All right, good. But you could you could say, look, we, we agree for six five? years, five years. You know, it's. I mean, the thing is, I at first blush when I I looked at this, I said, you know, why not go to five? And then if five 
You I know, think I would there's then, nothing. Then, then ask for ten, then, and right. then be done with no, it. No, I'm yeah. serious. No, that's no. reasonable. And right. I, that's what I was thinking. I want too. you to know that this all this mentions uh, Williams and Sparagis. It's not stamped and signed. The letter's not from him. Okay. But the the reports are, I mean, the reports are what they are. There's four inches of sediment, and, yep. uh, you know, at this point. So, uh, so we're looking for a motion to approve uh, monitoring every. Five years? Did we? Yeah. I think the next monitoring in five years. Would be I would say so. Yeah. Got Seems reasonable. Uh, I make a motion to uh, uh, change the monitoring period uh, for the Goddard School from every year to every five years. Do I hear a second? Second. second. All those in favor? <laughs> so every five years, with the caveat, if it comes back and in five years and it's level, still then we'll, six inches, right. or we'll end right. the then, program. Then right. try ten years or fifteen right. years or well, we've when, ended, when Chuck, the, when oh, Chuck's okay. we've ended the program with uh, Salem Five because it just was we're not going to watch this thirty-five years from now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just not something that we're going to end up. Sticking around, and they're trying still to responsible follow. for it, but we're just yeah, not well, watching. Is, yeah, we're we're out. I well, mean, yeah. we certainly won't be watching. Right. Well, I don't even want to request that another. If if it doesn't right. go up in five years, then it, we right. shouldn't. We'll end the monitoring program yeah. at yeah. that point, and yeah. it's it's up to them. I'll, I'll let the yeah. commission in five years decide. I don't think I'm going to be in this committee thirty-five <laughs> years from now. Come on, Bob. You never know. Well, exactly, and never say never. <laughs> Okay. The determination of applicability for 25 Larch Lane. Is that for us to sign? I do. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> I was thinking, what do we have that's dead on arrival? <laughs> project gone bad or something? <laughs> Uh, Jamie Mon used to say, DOA. Hmm. Has anybody uh, heard from Carl? His family? Yeah, I heard from Carl. He'll be at our next meeting. Uh, he just had some. Well, he has a baby yet? Uh, no. He told us before. Oh, did he? Yeah. Well, he's a, he's a new dad, and uh, I think he sent me an email saying that tonight's the first night he gets to sleep at home. So he's, he's, he wanted to sleep. He wanted to, he likes you guys, but his pillow, he likes his pillow. Sleep's better. important. Sleep's Did he important. have a boy or girl? Well, if he's got a new dad, he'll be at every meeting from now on. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to review the. Uh, oh, look at this, honey. Time for Goncom. <laughs> Did he? Yes, boy. Yeah. Do you have a boy? I have, have to pictures? review his email. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. not sure. Uh, Girl, no last, but I don't know. Yeah. Jeez. And hopefully they're all healthy. And I wasn't here. Ago. You were I wasn't here. here. I shouldn't sign this, right? Anyone can sign it. It's an administrative uh, action. The vote has already been taken. You're not saying. You're not saying you voted. We'll get the signatures no matter what. Uh, <coughs> Okay, we have another one for 128 Fairchild. 128 Fairchild. <coughs> Is this really our eighth mm -hmm. determination of applicability for 2017? Yeah. Oh. Is that good? It is good because we have about 20 minor, pro minor project permits and our whole point by making that change last year is we wanted to give more power to the people to, to get an over-the-counter permit right. instead of coming to us for uh, an RDA. So the, to see the RDAs drop and the minor permits go up yeah. is exactly what was supposed to happen. Yeah. And but these are 2017 determinations or is that a well, typo? <laughs> that's a typo. Okay. Right? But thank you for mentioning that. I don't know. It's just some looking at what power of the people. <laughs> it was a Black Panther chant back in the 60s. All right.
Did you ask you about this one yet, Doppler? Fairchild, yep. I make a motion to issue. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor? So the certificate of compliance on Trading Woods. Are we all set with that? Well, let's see. I have a uh, plan. One nothing, Red Sox. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. So, it's better if I turn it. Control shift minus. No, it didn't do it. I don't think you pressed the shift. <laughs> Oops. Control, Control shift. Plus. shift. What does that do? Mike, what does that do? Control shift minus. Uh, rotates. Oh. Rotates counterclockwise. Plus the plus plus plus. Plus. Does it go the other way? Yeah. Oh. Didn't know that. <laughs> well, I don't know at every meeting. <laughs> <laughs> we lost the... Uh... Oh, no. Another, uh... What? Week. Last night at five minutes to eight, the cable box I have in the main TV room in the house stopped feeding the signal to my TV. <laughs> True story. <laughs> and I don't think it had anything to do with the thunder and lightning. It was coincidentally, my son comes out, there's this huge clap of thunder that was probably a mile or so away from the lightning. And the minute the thunder hit, check the house, my son comes out and says, hey, Dad, the TV just went out. Nothing else in the house was out. The other TVs are working fine. And they're all slaved to the main box. Look at these little boxes they give you now, right? Mm-hmm. I thought my Shadio TV was... shut it off. Oh, I, I, was, yeah. I was... Worried. You know, it's one. The other cable box that works fine, but the timing was horrible. They were all grouped in the kids' toy room with the take off the Xbox. So you watch the World Series. It was kind of a... Anyone happen to see the the fire in the church down? I pool? saw videos. And I, saw, I went by uh, on um, I I went by on Lake Quantipaw by the stone church, but yeah, they were still uh, hosing it down at noontime. Yeah. It's terrible. The um, excavator showed up at two thirty. I was bringing my dog to the vet on the way back. I I I stopped by. You at VCA? What? The VCA? No, I go to. Uh, Stone and Animal Hospital. Yeah. And uh, so on my way home, I stopped by there. Three quarters of the church was already taken down with the excavator. Yeah. It was amazing. Is this the quick. wooden church? Yeah, the white one. The, yeah, big the white one. one that looks like it was falling apart anyway. Well, the no, paint job well, was no. a little. It's the one, was, you're, you're thinking of one beside Sabatino's. This is the one, yeah. the big, big one across the street. Oh, all right. It's the yeah. one near the stone church. Yep. Yeah. Right next to Artichokes. Yeah. Yes. Right next to Artichokes. Okay, yes, yeah. yes, I forgot the Baptist church. There. church. Yeah. The one across the street really looks run down. Yeah. Yeah, Sabatino's. That's the one that got really hurt when they they tried to put a Verizon uh, tower in the steeple. And they the neighbors shot them down, and then they took the steeple off. They've been trying to rebuild the church and renovate it since then. Why would the neighbors care if they put a Verizon tire inside the street? <laughs> because it, a lot of people think that uh, it causes, you know, cancer and brain damage, and so it was something that, you know, they can't 
100% disprove that it doesn't, so um, get shot down. That was many years ago. But the... Uh, There's people that don't believe in inoculating their kids yeah. against disease. It was, it was amazing to see how much of that, the actual wood structure of, of the church was still intact after that, that heavier fire, you know. I mean, the, the, the beams, they were charred, but they oh, were, yeah. you know. I can see it. 80% yeah, of standing. the beams were still intact. Part of the, part of the uh, steeple was still up. Yep, and I was, by, yep. and there was a crane next to it, but the whole roof, the, that was gone. the yeah. this part was all gone. I mean, that, that went that quick. Yeah. As, soon as, it, as soon as it went up, it, 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 it didn't burn or explode. Uh, I mean, it, within, within one hour, the whole roof and the majority of the majority of the steeple was nothing but a skeleton. Yeah, that's what I saw. It's just a shell now. Mm. Just had a wave. Oh, it's not there. Don't I? They but took the, it apart. Yeah. Oh, it's gone. But the, <laughs> it's going to be in the, <laughs> it's it's be this afternoon at, <laughs> at night. Four thirty. Put it back in. Basically, only had uh -huh. the very front facade See? of the church oh. was all that remained. The rest of it was gone. <laughs> Going. I don't think it slides. I think you just push. Well, can we continue there the meeting go. without yeah. Uh, yeah, we're looking technical in support? Here. Yeah, what do we need to talk about with Reading Woods? Uh, Reading Woods came up with a plan. Uh, we went out, me, Dave, and Chair Longley went out to the site. I don't know if anyone else was there. Maybe... Um, was this a while ago? Yeah, Dave Newmeyer might yeah. have been out okay. there. Dave oh, Newmeyer. Was there. Was there. And we noticed that the, the bounds were... Couldn't figure out what the deal was with the bounds because it wasn't associated with the 25 foot line, it wasn't associated with um, the 100 foot line. So we had a plan uh, drawn up and they told us what they were trying to do. They were just trying to protect an area that was designated as a no mow area, which incorporated the stormwater, uh, de uh, the stormwater um, detention basin. Detention basin. Detention basin. Thank you. Um, so with uh, you know, with the engineer, we went. I did a site visit, and we we moved some of the um, granite bounds, and we added some granite bounds, and that's what the plan would have showed you. So it created uh, you know a link to the the forested area coming out and around, and um, along the along the building, and granite bounds showing where you can and can't mow, protecting the tree still. Um, there was a uh, woody, there was woody vegetation in the detention basin, which was removed, and um, we didn't ask for anything else other than that the um, Holty Homes will make a $500 donation to the tree fund because they had attempted twice already to revegetate the uh, highway drainage ditch uh, that's in the back, uh, kind of down low in that area. There's, but nothing, nothing would grow, and so they decided instead of doing that again, they would just make a donation. And the reason why that even became something that they had to revegetate is when they cleared the area for that building, Building Seven. They went in too deep. They went into the um, the 25 foot CNV and they cleared out all that area. Well, you know, five, six, seven years later, can't tell at all. So, you know, we're revegetated and we're getting $500 for the shade tree fund. So, Sounds my good. recommendation is that they did everything they wanted to do, uh, uh, we wanted them to do. They showed a plan, which I can't show you right now. Um, and uh, there was some a request for the rain gardens and all the plants that we identified in the rain garden that had died off were replaced. Um, I don't have the check, so this would be an approval contingent on me receiving the check. I move we approve the certificate of compliance after Chuck receives the check. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. I know I, I don't need to see the plan for uh, approving it, but did they, the, um, the bound that seemed to be kind of a little kooky that was around that tree that was 
on the back side of that building? Does that stay in where it was? It's a yes. fairly mature tree that's yeah. there that yes. has a granite bound that's towards the parking lot. Does that stay in there? It is. Okay. Yeah, and they and added one, one so there, another one kind of made that look like it was in line okay. with the rest of them. So they, they did add one over there, or two over there, and one over by where we parked um, along the left-hand side of Building 7. Okay. So I understand that uh, Mr. Hayes and Ms. Scanlon took an uh, inspection of um, the proposed land gift. Of, um yep, we're both in full agreement. Yeah. I'll put another Matera cabin down there with a heliport so we can get to the property. <laughs> Okay. About what it would take. I was thinking an underground tunnel. Underground. Might under be under 128 Yeah. We can, yeah. We can do deep enough. You don't have to get permits. It's an <laughs> underground tunnel under a highway. It's in the English Channel. It's a channel. What, what could we call it? We could put a gate on it and charge fees and yeah. collect tolls. It was funny because it, at some point we had walked. We were clearly on the Latham property. A little escarpment there. You couldn't even talk because the traffic was so loud. <laughs> we had to walk back. But if we were about three feet shorter and both weighed about 70 pounds, we could have had a ball running through all the overgrowth and, and the stuff that's down there. It was just it's tough to get to as it is. Yeah, the right. vegetation out there is not is not ideal. It's all yeah. it's all horribly established invasives of different kinds and. Um, there's a path back there, and there's a place where people like to burn tires and tables. Yeah. And there's, uh, there's definitely about 150 empty Bud and Bud Light cans. So um, somebody's using the property for a kids, you know, to a little hangout at night or something. So I think I think we agreed. There's zero conservation value. And unless, um, as we had discussed, we had discussed openly here too, unless there was some. You know, what are you holding in your hand until the event that someday you can play a card that now you have, but if you didn't accept the gift, you wouldn't. But do I think it's worth hanging on for that opportunity? No. Right. We can tell. Thank you, but thank you. I, I think that's the prudent direction to go in this. I think you agree, right? I, I do. I, you know, um, I don't know if anybody in the town, anybody else in the town government would consider... The proposal, and I don't know if the offer is there for that, but you know, um, it seems like um, one possibility is for this property to be sold to an abutter. So that would be, you know, but that's out of our hands, and you know, well, I'm a little confused, didn't? And then the abutters Chuck? would may or may not buy it. Well, then the abutters would have property in. Well, but there's a the abutters are oh, state government. Oh, those abutters. Oh, yeah, because I think on the other side, Chuck said that there's a strip of land about 20 feet wide that's privately owned between Latham's property and those houses. Well, mm -hmm. I was thinking more it along has a high valuation on it, like a $35,000. I saw that. I saw that. And this that. property has like a $2,500 valuation, which right. is, so you couldn't even get access to that property unless you had the right of way over this other, well, I that's guess. The so that's the thing, you can't mm -hmm. offer this property sure. to the backyards of Stoneham. Well, you could, but the stone and Well, I mean, if somebody owned it, the fact that it's in a different town wouldn't matter. I mean, no, it wouldn't matter. They'd pay taxes in stone. two towns, but. Yeah. Is that 20 foot strip part of stone or part of Redding? Part of Redding. I'm not sure. Is it? Yeah, part, part of Redding. Part of Redding. It's kind of this little tiny sliver. It's the yeah. world's yeah. most inconvenient it's sliver. Weird. Is it and I, and I know somebody, somebody, like does, somebody, somebody designed that with clear thought. Of some maybe it was a road or a whatever. Some that wasn't wow. there accidentally. It's so. twenty feet. It's it's a, it's a strip wide. of land, twenty twenty five feet wide, about what hundred feet. That borders this property to the south yeah. before yeah. it's stone before stone. Right. Right. So it's that, like, weird. Weird. Like, right away. Does it say who owns it? Doing anything else? I'll check my notes. Yeah, I think there might be a trust <laughs> or something like that. Okay. Who owns it? So. Yeah. I make a motion that we don't. No one else wants to go out there? No. I think everybody should just walk out there to enjoy the day. <laughs> on, the right, on the right day. On the right it's day. It's not that. How did you access it? There's a cul-de-sac at the bottom of 
Evergreen. Evergreen. And there's actually two other cul-de-sacs, but you'd have to, I assume, walk through people's yards because I'm assuming those yards are butt with no easement. This has a clear road that's that's an easement to somewhere out there that the state probably owns. Mm -hmm. That's been kind of filled up so nobody can drive a car out there. Right. But people have walked around it right enough. Now. There's a clear path to get out there. But it's full of yard debris. Yeah. That's what it says. It's a, it's a count like and locked out. Nothing harmful. It doesn't look like anything. Well, there's some vases probably. There's probably some tires and crap out there. But I kind of, it just, it's, you can see the remnants of the roads that were out there for whatever purpose it served in building the highway or maybe they were there before the highway. Could it be used as a construction staging site? Like, you know... Well, I thought maybe the, the state highway? might be interested yeah. as an it's off raised. ramp. Well, except they have to do some excavation to get to it off the off ramp. And plus, mm -hmm. they have one just one exit up at 28. They got that off ramp right there. Yeah, no. got the big... Yeah. So I don't think they'd want two that close together. Well, they also have the Apache... Apache Station. Apache Pass. Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. Or right. 28. That's the, that's the one I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. no, well, no, there's... As you're coming up from, currently locked up. you're going 128 north before you get to the first Why exit. Aren't computer. they staging right in there? <laughs> mm -hmm. But the Apache Pass is right underneath. 28, right. Yeah, on 28. Underneath. If you come off of 128 <laughs> south to go on to 28 south, Should inside that clover yeah. is, the, is the depot you're talking about. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the patch. Right. Yeah. But that's where they store salt and sand and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't think they'd want another one down off the highway between 93 and 128, because I thought about that, and I said, that's nah, just too close. But that was my assessment. I could be wrong. Chuck's smiling. So is Mike. Is very anybody second my motion? So I'm, I'm watching, no, I, I'm watching I've, Chuck struggle. I've driven past that the place, and as the leaves start to fall, you can see. You know, you can see the the houses on the other side. I mean, sure. You know, it's 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 close. I mean, it would be nice if one of those uh, abutting properties wanted it. Um, it would also be comforting for those properties to know that the conservation commission, you know. Owned it, so it would those never properties be are taxpayers, though. But, but even if an abut, well, you're saying a property like the houses in Stoneham, if they wanted it, yeah. But there's a but there's property between those two lots. So even if they it, wanted it, an unknown owner in a trust. I think you could yeah, you could try to get an easement over it. But well, you could take it by adverse possession if you own it long enough, and there was no use of the land. You Take it that way. If you own, if you own the abutting piece, and you had some use for the adjacent piece, you could wage that war after 20 years. All right. So the commission has declined the offer yeah. for mm -hmm. the for a lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Mookie struck out with the bases loaded off that. I would. I just know that I don't know. Not two <laughs> map. I guess one. <laughs> I remember. You see, the only thing that we haven't found out is whether there's any any That's easements. Really map over two and lot one. Map any of the properties that are in Stoneham to get to that piece. Thanks. That's the only this thing. That referenced that account if there is was some kind of easement that you could actually utilize to get there, that would be the only thing that would make it, would make it worthwhile. And I, I got to be honest. You're right. If we were accessing it from this side of the highway with a budding Reading residence, and you have to drive all the way around, the, that it's kind of a pain in the neck to get to that mm. place where it is. It is. It's even though it's in Reading, it's not in Reading. Okay. Get there for me. We had one meeting minutes, right, Chuck? I had. I have two meeting minutes. I have 9.26 and 10.10. 10. I was um, got some feedback from people, and I added that in. And then Dave had some for tonight. And one of the, one of the things that we added uh, was from Bob Hayes, and he asked that I add something about the land gift on the 1010 meeting, and I wrote the commission discussed the land gift by Kenneth Latham. Mr. Hayes did a preliminary site visit to check for access points along the unknown dangerous and for unknown dangerous areas. 
A new site a new site visit will be scheduled with Miss Scanlon uh, and site has a report at the next meeting. I don't see anything in there about the bees. Uh, unknown dangerous areas. Oh, okay. I I didn't I wasn't trying to correct you, minutes. I just I only asked if you would left it out on purpose because nothing happened. There was no discussion, no vote, no anything. And Mike made a great point. If we're going to keep minutes for meetings, why don't we just do the stuff that's important, like the results of votes, rather than. Well, it's in there now. Is there any other changes to ten ten? The only thing that I, but you said you incorporated it was if if a decision was made. If an approval was made on the RDA, can it be specified that it's the approved a negative determination for the RDAs? I'm just looking for one that was approved on this. Because I think, I mean, I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of every detail, but I think that's an important point to make. So you want Just to say approved and you want to say negative approved determination. as a negative determination. Essentially the mm. same thing. Yeah, well, I just wanted the phrase, the negative determination was. We should just eliminate the word approved and say motion that for motion negative for a negative, negative determination. determination. Okay. I agree. Sure. So. <coughs> okay. Uh, motion to ex no further comments on. I make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. Second. Second. All those in favor? You took out that part I sent you, right? The part about haystack? Oh, I thought you meant the other thing. No, yeah, haystack. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're moving on to 1026. Uh, 1026. There 1026. Was, again, there was... Um, some people at it. So on Arcadia, so I, I incorporated what people sent me, but I didn't make notes on what people sent me. So you guys must remember and and say it, but it's all in here. If and I think this one, everyone said it's fine. Uh, I got one that uh, a person wrote that um, on our one thirteen Arcadia app. We needed to mention the DEP. I needed to be involved, and we suggested that they talk to them also. So that's going to be added to this. Um, I have that note in here. And then uh, we discovered <clears throat> that there is no street Birchcroft Ave in, in Reading, and we're going to make that Bancroft Ave. Bancroft? I don't know. Bancroft. Bancroft. <laughs> Two minutes, yeah, I'll use the other way. Bancroft app. So that was it. So motion to accept uh, at 9 26. I make a motion so to accept the uh, as amended. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Okay, hold on. Okay, so did. Reading Woods, what was the vote on Reading Woods when you guys were ready to um, sign that certificate of compliance? Okay. Can you, uh, I didn't write the vote down, I was doing something else. So what, who voted, who made the motion, and who seconded? You made the, you made the motion, right? Sure. <laughs> I think, I think, I think Dave, you seconded it. And I seconded it. Yeah, yeah. I think you made the motion, sir. Okay. Three sixty four Main Street. Bill Manuel called me up today and said that they're at a spot where they would like. He said me to review. What he's what he's saying is he, they're 
they want to find out if they're done. Um, if you would like me to go out there and check it out, I felt like the commission may want to be involved, so I wanted to find out sometimes next week when, and you're not holding them up. So it can be a site visit in two weeks. They're going to be doing other things. They just want to know if they're done with this. Are you talking about Lowell Street? 364 Lowell Street. He yeah, said Maine. Like, Maine. Yeah, he said Maine. Maine. I'm like, no. Oh. I know what he meant. <laughs> uh, I'll go out next week. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> On Tuesday? Let's say. Our site visit's not until for three weeks, so. Yeah. Mm. Good point. Um, Tuesday is. Monday, Tuesday, anybody? Monday is better. Just contact me. I'll, I'll see what I got. Yeah. Now, is this for the, the, um, Monday is better than Tuesday. It sounds anything like that they're has to, finished. Has to, okay. Have they done anything? Have they done anything? You're finished. Okay. Have they done anything out back? They, I asked them specifically about that and talked about your site visit. And I said that the Japanese knotweed was coming back up and um, what was your plan for that. And he said that they went, had gone out there and they had, with shovel, pulled it all out. And um, over by Lowell Street, where you and me saw that, he said that there was machinery was going to be used with that and they're going to monitor it. So both jobs have been taken care of. So what you saw should have been eradicated with, you know, by hand, with shovel, and then the machinery getting the one that's on uh, Dustin and whatever the other road is on that side, Dustin. I went there like Monday. Uh, Plymouth, yeah, Plymouth. on the Plymouth side. I went there like Monday. And a lot of the stuff that I saw was, it's all it, intermixed in the trees that are right near that cul-de-sac. Yeah, the well, it's up to us to yeah. say yes. Yeah. So, um, I mean, obviously, I think if we, if you said yes, don't think it means that we're satisfied. It's you know it needs to be monitored. I think both spots probably need to be monitored. What Bill had said was they thought that uh, the knotweed was part of the fill, but apparently not only was in the fill, but it was underneath it and the you know the historic soil. So it came right up as soon as they removed the fill. So they said that they were going to take it away. Uh, it was my my understanding. I thought that they were going to eradicate the knotweed that was on that site. Is that is it two different no, things here? I no, we're expecting it to be gone. Right. Well, it's not. Yeah. How do you do well, that? Well, he he says that he's done work since you've been there. I don't know how that could happen either, but I wasn't in a position where I could well, challenge so him. Let's just go see it. Yeah. Let's yeah. have well, a well, well, Is that in his site report? Uh, he didn't send in a site report uh, since the last one. Okay, because I've read the last one. We'll see it and we can... You can I just, say no. As I said, I, I didn't know what the expectation was. I knew... Uh, I, I assume looking at the stuff that's growing right now, that is the stuff that he said grew back. Bill, Bill promised us that the expectation was whatever we went out there and looked and thought there needed to be more that he would do it mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so that that's my question is it is it are we expecting for the knotweed to be eradicated in the areas that were indicated in the original plan yeah yeah or is it is okay even a provision to monitor for three years to make sure it's gone okay so that's all right so then it's pretty clear right okay so, um, what was the date when that was decided on? We could do an afternoon. We could do an afternoon on Monday. Monday. We could do Monday afternoon. Two. Three. Two. It's two, okay? You're talking the 29th? Yes. No, I can do that. Two, I can do a half hour then. you want to do it at one? Would that be better for everyone? It doesn't matter. I could do one. It's going to be a pretty quick site visit to see if the stuff's there or not, right? Well, 
it depends on whether we go way out the back. You can drive out there though, right? Mm. No, not no. yet. You can drive halfway out there. You can drive kind of to the, the back side of that, the uh, You can drive on the other road, road Dustin. You can, yeah, and walk right in there. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So do you want to say 1 o'clock in the afternoon then? Is that okay with everyone to do that? It's yeah. Fine. Next Monday? Yes, Monday it's coming night. Monday up the 29th. The only thing left is um, Main Street, the addition to our site visit. Yeah. Yeah. So, we, um, tree fell. Yeah. At, at a resident's house, and <clears throat> his understanding was that. Um, Conservation told him not to ever touch those trees along the side of his driveway. Um, that was under a prior administrator, and so we did a site visit and um, explained to him that we have ways of approving removal of trees. The issue is these trees are rotting, um, and also they are within 10 feet of his power lines that come off the street. So he's yeah. got a number of trees that he's got issue with, and we did a site visit. So at, the, at this uh, property, there was a couple of emails getting passed back and forth, and it seemed like there was some history with RMLD, and there's a long um, electrical line going from the pole to the house, and there's trees on either side of it, and branches fall down occasionally on it. And so in that email, um, DBW, RMLD, conservation were talked about. So we went out there, and it turns out there's probably 10 trees that need to come down. We talked about our tree guidance policy. I um, ended up emailing everyone, just a reply all email, letting them know that the commission went out there. This is what we can do. This is what we can do for each department with an emergency order. If they want to declare those trees are an emergency, we could issue an emergency order and that would be able, they would be able to do the work right away. But if they felt like that they didn't want to do the work and the work was the responsibility of the homeowner, and this is what we talked about when we're out there too, because ultimately it might be his responsibility, um, that we could assist him. Uh, and so we showed him the tree policy and told him how that worked. And he thought that was reasonable. And he's looking at about 10 pines that are next to the house, within 20 feet of the house, or closer and within seven to ten feet of the the wires. Were they dead? Uh, there was a few there's, dead. But most there was one that it was falling over. It was yeah. just a rotted out stump. I mean, that's what started this all. This one fell. I think that was the original tree you talked about back in 2002, and that tree died and it, it fell over. And I mean, it, it seemed to me that this was a person that, that got some direction from town officials and took it. Forever. Took it, you know, seriously, or you know, was told not to touch him and refused to do anything. I mean, occasionally, if he needed to, uh, he would push on a tree and, and get it to fall over before it fell into his yard or something like that. But um, they're all overgrown and growing into his yard, and yeah, it's just it's pretty typical of what other people have asked us. Yeah, I thought I'm, I saw from the street view there. that need to come down because they're right in the line of those wires. Yeah, I don't know how that works, although whose responsibility is going to run the wires so they go into yeah, the property. Yeah, because it's attached to it. it gets the yeah. And that was pretty much it. I think it helped. I do too, yeah. I think it helped. I don't know if you had any follow-up. Actually, follow I would like some clarification on when something is deemed a hazard tree, are we not looking at it from our tree replacement policy? Are we just allowing that, that tree to be removed because it is a hazard? Right now, when a tree is considered a hazard, there is no tree, there's no uh, a tree replacement policy does not get um, enacted. Really? No. Yeah. It I, makes sense because if we told I, I to understand that, but that's, tree and they get hurt. but I did not understand that. It might might be 
You might want to add a little caveat to our tree replacement policy about that because it's not written down. Well, but so a lot of times a an arborist comes in here and gives us all the reasons in the world why this tree is the tree that the homeowner wants to be take down is rotting or there's a split and that split is rotting and the life is only going to last so much longer. I mean, doesn't that open up those trees to be taken down for safety issues and not need to be replaced? Good point. Absolutely. Good point. I but if the tree really does suffer from those kind of issues, then it's it's a ticking time bomb. Well, that's that's a bit, well not you, what you're saying, but what we're talking about here is a bigger issue that needs to be addressed at some time. But I don't know if we have the time to get into it now because it would involve other departments and you know the tree policy. But if a homeowner that's you know that gets an emergency permit to take down a tree because it's going to fall, you know it's. If they wait long enough, they don't have to do anything about that tree. Um, I mean, that's 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 the lucky part. I mean, hey, you don't have to do anything about your tree, but guess what? It, it's going to fall, so it's gonna fall on your house. And hopefully it so it's not it's damage. not really a good spot to be. But other towns <coughs> have added, we're going to give you the emergency permit, but within that emergency permit, we say that you have to come in and talk to the commission or file with the commission about this tree, and there may be planting. But the way we've historically done it is if it's deemed by, you know, an emergency needs to be by an operist, by, you know, the tree warden, by, you know, someone in charge at RMLD, some official, you know. We can't call something a, an, emergency an emergency ourselves, so the, the uh, engineering department. So, you, so in, the, in, in this instance, and we can see that these trees are encroaching on the wires. We're not saying, oh, that's that's a, a hazard. Yeah, you can take that down and you don't have to adhere to our tree replacement policy because it is a hazard. I just want to get this kind of straight Only if head. RMLD said that they need to so take them down. So it would be RMLD. Right. RMLD could say we need to take the trees along the, the wires to the house down mm -hmm. And they've come here and said they look at 15 foot, you know, span around the wires. And I think that would take out most of those trees, but that's that's the wires on the street. So we didn't talk about this. But but as it goes further, once you go past those wires and those pine trees are leaning over onto that house, mm -hmm. then that becomes beyond the wires. That becomes the tree, just strictly tree policy. It's in, my, in my opinion, well, because it's clear to me. No, um, that's not what I'm uh, an arborist really can't call it an emergency. Yeah. It would have well, to be really, minute, really though. dead, completely dead, yeah. to, to become an emergency. Um, what's going on, Mike? What'd you spell there? I don't know. I was just classification. Oh. That's what that says. No. <laughs> But it's supposed to say classification. I, I, I'm clear on that kind of now. Um, but um, I'd really also like to bring in a, up another thing. Um, we had talked about a Christmas party. I mean, are, are folks interested in that? Are they interested in bringing their spouses or not? <laughs> um, <laughs> and. Um, Karen's. We can bring what? We can bring the Karen's. Karen's. Sure. My wife always likes a party. She does. Okay. Don't don't take that wrong. <laughs> and I was wondering if you know we want to do Matera Cabin or we want to go someplace like Pertucci's or. <laughs> There's a problem with Matera Cabin. Yes. That's an alcohol-free zone. <laughs> oh, because I asked Chuck. I said, "Can yeah. we drink?" Yeah. The last time we had Chuck embarrassed you into hosting. I think. Or intimidated you into hosting. Or something like that. And You've been cleaning the house for a year. To so when was to when did Matera become an alcohol-free zone? Because for the previous administrator, we had a send-off party there. And it I'm, I'm sorry, alcohol. I just assumed it was because it was owned by the town. So. Oh, it's so. most definitely alcohol-free. Okay, so it yeah. is. Okay. Yeah, okay, I was going to say, because I, I, I didn't think you could have booze on public property. No, you can't, no. All right, so that's out. <laughs> <coughs>
They now, this is, old expression says you're not doing anything wrong to get caught. <laughs> no, no, no. This, uh, I mean, this, I guess it's this. still on camera. This, <laughs> that's all right, I was kidding. You know. Plenty of places in town that, you know, like just thinking that, uh, 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 what's a pizza place that's down on Watkins Brook Drive? Well, Petucci's. Petucci's. Yeah, they, they have, have like, a great small room. That little back I use room. all the time. They have a small back room. How many people do you need to, uh, to hold that room? Yeah. The minute down there is, I, mean, I, I, I have softball board meetings down there. We have anywhere from 10 to 12 people, so he's never charged me for the room because you're buying his food and booze. That's always worked out well. They're pretty good about it. So you it looks know, like we'd have like this, 12 people. Obviously, this time of year, they're going to get very busy because yeah. that's what pe people want to do. I think it may not be a problem, but it, we, we, I don't know what kind of dates are left at this late date trying to plan one, but it might be, might be wide open. On a weeknight, it's it's probably more likely that's available. The week, <laughs> we can weekend. just we'll just plan it for a night. We're supposed to have a con con meeting. And we'll all go there. <laughs> Did you just say that? One of the non meeting <laughs> nights no. that you know. No, we're we're having having con -con meeting. Meeting. we can't record. No, we can't record. We can't meant the one we were having a meeting on. We can have a quick meeting there. We can't record it, so that would be great. You're getting ahead of yourself, right? Well, when would you have? In terms of spouses, if they want to come, early December. So we have to make it mandatory. We have anything else on the agenda? No. Did you want to discuss that thing about the, the park and not? Oh, the, yeah. yeah. You know, I forgot because I have the pictures here. But did we make a decision? No, we didn't. We just like Should talk we it over it. Well, the thing is, I, I'm not really certain whether we want to make that uh, an on camera thing. Not necessary, is it? Okay. <laughs> what can you expect? So I, I are you expecting our applicants, applicants to come? <laughs> no, no, we got no, one more one thing. More. No, get one more thing. So uh, I was sitting at my desk just doing the regular thing, you know. I get a call from Dave. Dave's checking out the best bagel places in town, and he drives past Perfectos, oh, no. and he sees, what does he see? <sighs> can we guess? Cars parked. At least I can still count the cars that are parked on the no parking area in one, with one hand. So he's got five cars out there. Wait, so, out on the grass? Out on the grass. Four on the right hand side of the dumpster. And you took And pictures. one on the left hand side of the dumpster. Oh. Well, how soon it, that's is the it business getting... owner's problem, right? Well, it is. So me and Dave, Dave is kind of think, you know, thinking through this, and he came up with, well, what's going to happen when we don't have any snow events and we've allowed on uh, November 15th the chains and the ballers to come out? And I just want to let you guys know that, you know, we need to be steadfast with this situation. We agreed to have three cars there. And we're going to have to use, you know, the violations and, you know, escalate that to an enforcement order and then escalate that into maybe a ticket, which would, might be the first ticket ever. But I did call uh, Max, who didn't call me back, and I said, you got five cars over there. What's, what's going on? And I'm sure he probably moved them as soon as we called them, but it's, you know, I can't, we can't police it that way. I mean... People. But the thing is, one of the things that I discussed with Chuck, and I said very clearly when, when he was here, you know, we asked that that not continue, and he assured us as the owner of that business that that would not continue, and it has. See that. And the other thing I said to Chuck, not to not to cut you off, but I also said to Chuck, I, I think that we we gave a huge concession by allowing any cars to be parked in that buffer zone area at all, outside of the, the marked mark lanes and marked parking spaces in that parking lot. So I think there's been huge concessions that have already been given to that site. And then also I think there were promises that were made by the owner of that business that that wouldn't continue and, and it has. When I remember discussing that with him at one of the meetings that I went to, and I didn't attend the final closeout meeting. Those must have been in September. I remember mm -hmm. saying to him, you can't allow your employees to park there. And I remember his response that time being, well, I can't change that. I remember that at one of them. Yeah. He said, I can't change that. 
So I don't know what's going to motivate him to stay out of the jurisdictionally protected area except a ticket and an enforcement order. Well, so clarify, the, the stuff that we approved is not installed, correct? Not yet. Not no. yet. But we only really approved that there would be three cars that would be able to be parked there at any time. Mm -hmm. and, and whether the bollards are there or not there, there still should be no more than three cars that are parked okay. where but, we allowed. But, but, the, but, the, but f that one car that's to the left of the dumpster, right. isn't there supposed to be something there permanently yes. all the time? Yeah. yeah. That's, so that car shouldn't have been there, shouldn't be there. So at all. You're right. No. So let me ask, since we signed the order, it's an effective order, yes. even if the work has not happened. And did we stipulate in that order that that the what the parking? You don't have to go back to the order. You can write in. You can write a violation. Well, so well, so can I just ask, when's he going to do the order project? That reflected what his request was. When when is well, he going to do the project that that came before us and get restrictions up there so that it is idiot proof? And people shouldn't be parking there. People can't park in certain areas. And then at that point, if there's mistakes, but I guess do we have an idea of like we didn't approve this and he's not going to do this until next winter because it'll be in his way and he wants to continue parking there. I think well, the fact that the I, I, my that. position is I think the fact that the bollards and every the chains and, and that are not there is a moot point at this point because. Doesn't he have three the, years within t which the, to do this? The agreement Isn't was that yeah. they wouldn't park there. And we had assurance from the owner of the business that that condition wouldn't continue to exist. Did we mm -hmm. had, Ready? so uh, I remember something similar to Nika and uh, unfortunately a, uh, a, you know, an answer that I wasn't that pleased with, but it was something similar to, to that I recall was, well, I can't guarantee because I don't know what they do. Right. And if you see something, call me and we'll make sure it moves. And the, I, I think one of us said it may even be me that's, well, we can't police you. That's not the intent. But the, the intent of this project was to create a system that would no longer allow that to occur. Right. Um, so I, 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 I do, I, you know, I understand I don't want to see them there. I, I wish it, it seems like because I feel like sometimes I've seen his what I feel like is his car in those locations. So it is upsetting. But what I would hope is that this project just moves forward sooner than later so that they can't do it any longer. Because I, I don't well, know see, what else. What, but what? Because, I mean, this is what we, we went through before this project was even proposed, right? Chuck or whoever would tell them you can't park there, you can't park there, and they wouldn't listen. Nobody would listen. So, if they, um, but um, they have three years to do it. Think about put it. Think of it the other way. What's the impetus for them to do it? Well, so I guess. So I, I'm kind of like it's it's in our face, you I, know. <laughs> it's, it's well, except that there's some clear guidelines as to why we're doing what we're doing, so that people can't park there. Correct. Right. So yes. if he thinks that the commission's got no teeth. Then we what need might to give change. them teeth. Well, we might just do something that lets him understand. I don't feel that like waiting. There's some authority, not just some paper with words on it or some agreements. If you're not going to oh. do this, this is what it's going to cost you. We're not trying to be unbusiness friendly. So, oh. taking it that next step, Chuck called the owner, hasn't heard, never got a call back. If um, so maybe we should come up with something some direction for chuck well, if gonna, the owner was, calls him back exactly is case a if the owner does not call him back case b if the owner calls you back you tell him we discussed it we're not happy with i mean not surprised by it but not happy with the ongoing parking problem and w the commission's prepared to start issuing an enforcement order to get this rectified. I try to get a hold of him on the phone first. And yeah. if he doesn't talk to you, I'd send him a registered letter. And if he doesn't respond to that, the next thing I'd do is I'd send him a, some kind of a fine or a bill or a ticket or whatever. I'd also, I think it's worth asking what the timeline of getting this other stuff installed is. With what? 
with getting the the project, this recent project that we have yeah. approved oh, installed. Yeah. 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 Because where's that project? I, I, I want a status. definitive understanding of that. And if there's he, a lot of work there. And if he can't provide a definitive understanding, I think that also gives me some indication of what direction I would want to go. Yeah. The other thing is I think we also should discuss so that Chuck also has, I think, the direction that the commission would like to go in <coughs> should even this, let's say everything got installed tomorrow and as part of the project we gave the ability to have those chains and the ballots taken out on November 15th and then put back April 15th. What's going to happen if this continued, this condition continues February 5th next year when those chains are down? Is it, do we want as a condition, a, a commission under those conditions to say there is no phone call? It's like you get an enforcement order and you get a fine. You know, I think that, you know, the rubber has to hit the road somewhere. So Rather than keeping talk, 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 and saying the same thing over again, and there's non-compliance. Is a clear process to getting to the fine. It's like a like a ladder. You need to start out with. You can start out with an enforcement order. That's perfectly fine, but mm -hmm. that it needs to be justified, and you know. So you need to support the fact that you've given him a fine for whatever it's going mm -hmm. to be. But you have to show proof of warnings and all that. And I think that's why it was written that way. So it's going to be a letter. It's going to be a you know, a violation letter and then, you know, request to come into the commission or just to answer the letter. And then if it continues again, you could send them the violation. And if it continues again, you could say, now we're going to send you, uh, you know, a ticket. We're just going to ticket you every day right now. And we can ticket up to $300 a day, um, which, you know, would add up quickly. If we... <laughs> I, I think it, people respond very quickly when they see real money on the table. And I think if he thought he was going to get a $300 a day fine every time he allowed somebody to park where they shouldn't, I think he'd probably, he'd probably put a stop to that pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing, but you know, it's not every human is built the same way, but money usually has a way of getting people's undivided attention. Right. No, and, and uh, I think it was brought up, like, if he doesn't call me back. I, when I've talked to him, it's, I've, he's always called me back. I mean, I think someone said that he's going to say, oh, I, don't, I can't control my employees. I, I expect that's, more, I'm more of a, that than not to get a call back from him. So how much they tell, them, how much they tell you you're going to pay them? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I don't, I don't know who said this, but it's always hard to... Um, it's always hard to speak directly and you know to someone you need and he might feel the same way with his employees if he you know it's they leave or something like that low employment I know you're a business owner I mean but I had 53 of them and they all knew I didn't run the company by committee mm -hmm. the rules are pretty clear so I don't know I just am They're a different crowd. Well, but they're professionals. They're all mechanics. Mechanics, engineers, and salesmen. Yeah. I mean, they, they had an opportunity to make some nice money. Clearly, we're not we going to be able to, like, change how he is. We just have to, like, realize, I will get a phone call back, I'm sure, or I can walk in there, and he's going to be really friendly. I'll mention it to him. He'll probably have the cars moved right away. But it will happen again. we gotta get, yeah. we got to get this <laughs> program started. Right. we get the fence up, the parking spot's in there. At least we'll be safe for a certain yeah. part of the year. And basically, what I should have written in the order of conditions is that I have the key. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. I was just thinking yeah. that too. It's like, <laughs> can we just give you the I have the I have the key to <laughs> oh. the chain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Call yeah. Chuck when you want this yeah. thing unlocked. Yeah. 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 Call me at three in the morning. Don't and call me get a call up in North Conway. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, yeah, it's just, you know, hey, hey we'll. It, it is what it is. I think we have a path. It's just this time between now and when it happens. That's well, which of us lives the closest? I guess that's the way to start. I'm almost in North Reading, so it's I know not Mike me. goes past it every day. <laughs> Do you stop in for a bagel? I don't go past. You live the closest. I, uh, go down. I, I do. I can walk there. Yeah. 
So I just thought I'd make him happy after the you know, so the split the tax going to improve by the selection board. Yeah. Yeah. A lot I'm of upset business on the Almost after. every daily. And that wasn't a hundred percent. I mean, no. parking is certainly an issue, but that's not. It's I mean, not our problem. It's not that, our, that's the site. It's not our problem. We actually add, allowed three additional parking spots. I mean, it's really can't handle. I'm not anymore. suggesting it is. I'm just it, everything exacerbates other things that act in the favor of a small business owner. So, but that's that's life. Okay. Now, ready, ready to adjourn? Mm -hmm. Make yeah, a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Meeting adjourned.